Hello, hello, hello. Welcome and thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Foundry Virtual Tabletop Presents A House Divided, our uh, original uh, adventure that we created specifically uh, for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. It is a, a really unique and interesting uh, narrative that we are all here to enjoy and experience. And uh, you should too, because it's a lot of fun. Uh, we are seeing really great feedback from the groups that are playing through this each week. And it's really interesting to see how different everybody's experience with it has been. Um, but with our group, uh, we are all here, aside from unfortunately Kate tonight, who had something come up um, and is not able to join us today. So we're very, very sad to miss her for this episode, but we will soldier on and uh, Kate will be back with us next uh, next time we, uh, we stream. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in with a little recap of what happened in episode two, and then we will get back to the action. Um, so last session, the party began exploring the ruined halls of Raven Tree Estate, an ancient and venerable manner working on behalf of a mysterious patron the group began to gather clues about what disaster may have befallen uh, and may have occurred to cause the sudden disappearance of house corvinaris 20 years ago when we began last episode the party was in the ruined confines of the ballroom and drawn forth by the music that maze was playing the group encountered a residual haunting of spirits cursed into some uh, diabolical <laughs> form of perpetual dance. Um, spurned to hateful action, these spirits attacked the party, but thankfully they were able to be defeated and driven off through combination of um, combat and uh, allowing the musical melody that seemed to somehow bind them to dissipate. Um, these spirits may yet linger uh, if their curse is tr to be truly lifted. Uh, it's something that the party may have to deal with again. Something uh, else strange befell the group after that encounter, guided by a mysterious residual spirit of Usk the butler, uh, at least some leftover shadow of the butler. Um, the party was guided to the great dining hall where seemingly the most significant event of the disappearance of House Corvinaris occurred many years ago. The party encountered there a scene of devastation. Uh, and in the confines, in the destroyed confines of the dining hall stood an unstable and fluctuating portal amidst the wreckage of a great dining table. It was clear that something terrible had happened in this place. The portal bore clear evidence, clear signs of being connected to extra planar energy. And that was something that um, was, a, was an important clue in discovering what may have happened. As the party approached to investigate, a twinned pair of magical terrors, arcane wraiths rose from their stasis to attack. One wraith, violet and shrouded with umbral energy, the other orange and pulsing with a chaotic auburn. The, the potency of these wraiths seemed to somehow be connected to the portal, one waxing while the other waned. And as this portal fluctuated between seemingly disparate states, a visage of someone, someone from beyond, someone urging the party to flee the terror of the wraiths and come to some semblance of safety encouraged the party to risk the transit, first tested out by Vlad and his eldritch capabilities to ascertain that the portal certainly led somewhere else, and Abigail and her knowledge of transplanar studies proving that this was perhaps the path to either greater knowledge or further adventure or safety or perhaps something else entirely. The party fled through the portal, um, joining the figure from beyond and tumbling forth into a very different sort of manner. Similar to 
the ruined um, halls of Raven Tree Estate that they just left, and yet this version of the manor is completely overgrown and suffused with chaotic and verdant energy of growth. The sky and the trees and the um, bushes outside are all this uh, auburn and red and colors of autumn and perpetual and there's this loamy musk uh, scent in the air of things growing and motes of pollen and the sounds of the manor itself are completely different from the forlorn haunted creaking of the uh, the ruined manor that they just departed tumbling forth into um, the foyer of this other form of the manor um, the party was greeted by none other than Usk, the butler himself. However, a version of Usk that seems somehow different than the spirit that guided the party's actions um, to a certain extent in the ruined halls. And this version of Usk, the butler, has greeted them and began to explain some aspects of their current situation. Um, and rather than recap all of the questions and answers that the party asked, I think we'll head into the action and allow for some of that ground to be retread, to refresh everyone's memory, both those of you watching and those of us here playing. And that's where we will resume uh, with Foundry Virtual Tabletop Presents A House Divided. And we'll get straight to the gameplay after our very awesome introductory video. Take it away. Right, and welcome back. Let's get to it. I want to immediately pass the baton over to the party who you are here in this foyer of this very different type of manner. And Usk the butler has given you some information, although this is a great moment to ask any questions that you have. Usk has implored you for help because clearly the situation is something has happened and it's clear that um, Usk is not entirely able to resolve things on his own. So you as a newcomer in this space, you may be positioned to make a difference and he has implored you for your help. So I'll show the artwork of Usk the Butler here to everybody as he stands before you and he encourages you to ask any questions you have, um, he is at your service. First question, is he single? <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking him that question? Who does No, absolutely not. Uh, do we have access to the map? I wanted to look around. Too. Oh, absolutely. Um, yes, that would be a great thing for me to do. Is there anyone else in the room or is it just Usk and us? 
I think there's yeah one dude yeah there is in fact a goblin servant perhaps has the per perhaps appearance of a servant uh surprisingly dapper um for a goblin and um dressed in a, a smart uh vest with a, a little uh cravat and a orange um, hand towel draped over his arm, ready to provide refreshment or assistance should you require it. Oh, I think Maze might require it. I I am kind of bleeding on your couch. That's my bad. Uh, oh, are you all like it. rainbowy? Like, remember when you like? <laughs> yeah, he looks the, like the he's light. starting to fade out of existence. A yeah, little bit. the light like def diffract it. Fract, fract, fuck. What's the word? Defract? <laughs> Defract? That doesn't sound right, but it Defract. kind of feels. Fractal? Refract. Refract. Diffusions or refracts? I think I'm confusing. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to just look around. Um, All those fracking words. <laughs> is this room. Are there any windows or is this just simple? There are. Lit? There are windows to the south, um, which provide a little bit of a vantage point into. The grounds beyond. Um, I, I want to take a peeky peek and kind of get a vibe to see if it looks similar to how it did when we were in the other version of this place. You you peek out the window and and you see a, a just complete overgrowth of bushes and vines and trees that block your view from this particular window. You almost can't see anything. It Is seems it as if the wildlife has encroached upon the exterior of the house and almost completely grown over this particular window. Others might offer a superior view. Gotcha. Okay. Go up to Usk, sort of look him up and down, and ask, do you um, know me? He thinks for a moment, and he says, No, I... Do, do I... Do I know you? Should I know you? I'm sorry, who are you? Uh, I'm here on a summons from my family. Your, I presume you work for. Your family? You are... You are of House Corvinaris? You? He thinks for a moment and says, Hmm. Curious. Unexpected. I... Do you know Ari? Um... Ari? A distant cousin, perhaps? No, I... I do not. I... I had considered myself well versed in the house's genealogy. But, um, who are your parents? Insight check, real yeah, quick. Sure. I... Yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> what in particular is your hypothesis I'm, or theory? Here? I'm just trying to see if he's he's acting surprised. Like, what? Who's Ari? If it's genuine surprise, or yeah. Not. Or if you're he... more focused on, does he actually know who Ari may be, and or Alphonse? If this is a trap, if he's like mm. leading us, some like if he's in on something, yeah. Like, all right, I'm trying go to... ahead and, and give me a, a blind rolled uh, insight check. Okay. Private GM roll. All right. Um, you sense that um, his response may be born a little bit more out of uh, perhaps some degree of scatterbrained or um, distraction rather than necessarily for sure he does not know any of these things. Um, it's possible that 
he's not in a place to really remember or that he genuinely doesn't know, but you don't get the sense that he's intentionally trying to mislead. Okay. I reply just sort of muttering, I was hoping you would tell me. Um, do you know where we came from? Well, yes, you, you came from, from Raven Tree Estate, of course. And what is this? Well, this is Raven Tree Estate. Oh, glad we cleared that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you guys do all the uh, the mystery stuff here. Hey, buddy, and I'm looking at the uh, goblin. What do you guys got for, in terms of uh, in terms of beverages? Oh, why, yes, sir. We have a fully stocked um, bar of many vintages. Why don't you bring out a couple and we'll see which one works. Ah, uh, yes, an assorted option for guests of the house. You see the goblin look towards Usk, and there's almost like a question mark at the end of that <laughs> statement. Um, and Usk looks back at him and says, y yes, yes, of course, these are um, guests of the house, yes, and they will be staying for, um, for some time, of course, perhaps, and I will see to it that you have uh, accommodations prepared. Yeah, you've got some uh, salted meat, so I'll take some of that too. Um, Honey, you say we're gonna be here for some time. What do you mean by that? Oh well, um, I do regret to inform you that um, nobody leaves. Really, um, there well, it is. <laughs> I mean, perhaps there there may be ways, but um, nobody's managed it yet. We've we've been here yet. for some, some time. I mean, you are welcome here, of course, at Raven Tree Estate, especially you, of course, if if you are in fact um, family. Um, well, don't don't let me discourage you. There there may be. Um, Woodfellow would know more. Really, you should speak to him. Yeah, bring them all. Why don't you bring that old woodfellow on down? We'll have a conversation. Oh, uh, he, you really are going to have to go to him. Uh, it will make sense more um, when you do that. But first, let, let me, um, perhaps we should go uh, speak somewhere a little bit more, a little bit privately. He looks Wait. around. Is this not, pri are we being listened to? Uh, probably. Oh. By who? Maze wants to look around to see if he can see anybody watching or if there's like eyes behind one of the paintings or something. <laughs> sure. Um, are you doing this actively or, or more sort of passively? He, he's just kind of picked up the cup of whatever's been on the table next to him, has been drinking it. And yeah, he's just kind of, it, it will be an active like, Start to walk around the walls and like yeah, sure. looking well, at the art well, and everything. Perception check. While he's doing that, I am going to look at the butler, or not the butler, not Usk, but the little goblin. And I'm going to just kind of like memorize what he looks like for later. Sure. Um,. Yeah, you know, we'll, uh, no roll needed on that just now, um, but I will uh, perhaps ask for one later to, if, 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 it's, if it's needed. Okay. Um, I'm anyways. at least looking at his clothes, like the features that are like really obvious. Sure. I want to at least get that down. Sure. Um, Maze, you don't see anyone... Um, spying on you or anything, although you do hear a bit of rummaging going on um, behind the door here to the west. Or, oh. Sorry, east. Mm, somebody's moving in. Don't, don't play the pew! What? Oh, no. Remember what happened last time? <laughs> Maybe they'd be happy on this side. This seems like the happy side of you know, the house. 
Um, Usk, Usk looks at you skeptically and says, I also cannot recommend playing the piano. Everybody uh, saying not to play the piano now. I want to play the piano. I had um, no idea. Okay. It Usk, rarely goes. It rarely goes well. Usk, you said you had a place more that we can talk. Um, oh. Why don't you bring us there right now so we don't have to be so cryptic? A capital idea. I would um, suggest that you accompany me to, to my quarters, and uh, I'll have. Uh, tea and, and beverages uh, sent up for us. <laughs> I don't want freaking tea, but yeah, I get your meaning. <laughs> I understand, uh, sir, of course, the, the beverages. Um, yes, not just tea. Um, tea and beverages. Uh, and uh, yes, well, why don't you uh, f follow me and then we can talk. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Abigail hops down from that little bench she was using to peek over the window and like fluffs out her little scholarly robes and puts her chin up and follows very stately. Man, As he uh, glances out the window to the south and then put down the apparent flower vase he's been drinking out of and on the piano <laughs> and walk after the party. Yeah, you notice that um, you notice that through the south window um, you observe a great wilderness that is alight with autumnal colors and practically choked by lush plant life. Nearly every inch of the building, as you kind of gaze to the side, seems to be covered in growth, whether it's ivy or vines or bushes. Um, and there are large sections that seem to be almost completely covered. It looks as if the wilds have reclaimed the property long ago, and yet there are signs of inhabitation and life everywhere, so uh, you kind of see this just verdant uh -huh. um, endless horizon as you gaze out to the south. Damn. Where the Usk, hell are uh, we? says, C -c come along, and he moves towards the double doors to the foyer and opens them and strides into uh, a quite different looking atrium to the ruined one that you experienced a while ago. As we're walking, I'm going to like hold my hand out and a cup is going to materialize. I'm going to shove it in Maze's hands as oh. he's like put the vase out. I'm like, I told you, stop drinking out of random things. <laughs> How are, nobody makes books about what are you're supposed to be able to drink out of and what you can't. I mean, uh, there was that one place with the, the shoe, and I thought that was going to be wrong, and then everybody was drinking out of the shoe. I'll um, get you to pause here for a moment. Um, would, you, would any of you be uh, inquisitive about aspects of this particular chamber or are you following Usk as he I'm methodically looking... walks up the stairs and what just what is this I'm curious about yeah, what's the difference between the statue in the center and what we saw on our side uh significant differences yes significant differences the the grand entryway is uh, dominated by a massive tree which seems to grow directly out of the stonework in the center of the room um, the planter that surrounds it is barely large enough to contain the trunk. Coiled around the tree is a stone statue of a dragon with great feathered wings spread out to um, sort of held over the foyer. There are gnarled roots that have crawled out of the planter and completely overgrown the floor. Uh, they threaten to catch the feet of anyone who's not paying attention to exactly where they step. The walls of the room are adorned with paintings and tapestries, and uh, the ceiling is crisscrossed with encroaching ivy and vines from the floor above. However, as you gaze up, you see there is a collapsed or eaten or, or kind of um, eroded away hole in the ceiling that, uh, that stretches upwards into uh, the upper echelons of the building. Usk, um, what's that? And I'm going to point to the dragon statue. Or who is that? Oh, um, uh, that is, uh, 
Uh, that's Lady Silvaria. The dragon is Lady Silvaria? Uh, yes. Um, does that name ring a bell to me? Yeah, do I know anything about... Good questions. Um, I, I want to answer this notes. carefully. Did I... Do you feel as if I said that name before, or are you asking from I'm the history of your I'm feeling like you might have... Wait, hold yeah. on. Let me look through my notes. Your ledger or something um, that we looked through. A guest book. It was certainly not a name in the guest book. No. Okay. No. I'm looking at all the names. It's a name. I don't believe it's a name you would have heard from me. Um, okay. Nor would it be a name that registers for any of your um, historical recollection. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I I looked through my notes. I don't have that name written down. It sounded kind of familiar, but I was wrong. Silvaria. Um, do I at least know like the origin of the name? Like, oh, that sounds Sylvan, or that sounds Orcish, or that sounds Elvish. Like, do I? Does anything? Yeah, I mean, like... certainly, at, at least given the, um, uh, you know, kind of the, the the nature of the name, there there is something Sylvan-ish. Uh, of course, it shares several letters in common, but um, is it like silver or S Y like S I S Y L V A R I A. So it I'll sounds kind of fey. Sounds like a fey name. It. it I think that would be a fair assumption. Okay. Huh. So, is, is she's obviously very important, has a whole statue uh, in the foyer. Um, what do you know about her? Oh, well, um, she is very important. Um, yeah. Patron and, and uh, proprietress of uh, Raven Tree Estate uh, these days, um, although it is fortunate, of course, that she spends much of her time uh, asleep. Um, I can tell you more about this, um, perhaps when he looks around. Why don't we continue upstairs? Yeah, that sounds a great idea. I give the party a look. <laughs> a look, TM. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a look. <laughs> Anyone else taking in anything here before you follow Usk up the stairs to the second floor? Any other questions before I change this? Is there scene? a different goblin servant, or is that the same guy? Um, there are uh, multiple goblin servants that all have slight differences in their appearance and persona. Uh, there's not... They don't all have different tokens, but um, there are many. Uh, there are many such servants, each of whom um, are kind of seemingly busy with tasks that don't seem to you very important. Um, but they seem to be taking them with a great deal of um, attacking them with a great deal of, of right. sincerity and fervor. Alphonse, did your family employ? Goblins? Is that the norm? I suppose when they moved to this place, they started doing so. I, I have no idea. So, so there have been goblin servants here before this, uh, this demi plane or whatever we're on. You follow up the stairs to the top of, um, to the top of the landing. Uh, of the great um, balcony. The carpet here is stained and well-traveled, but it's been cleaned recently. Um, the effort involved in cleaning it uh, can only do so much at this point. Some of the damage is certainly permanent. Um, the stairs here have a broad landing which overlooks the foyer. On the opposite side of the foyer, back near the um, front doors of the manor, is a large balcony that offers a, a sort of overlook and view. Um, to the north, the hallway leads deeper in. Um, and you hear, even from here, you, you can overhear sort of a raucous din of um, some amount of revelry uh, happening. 
Alph Alphonse, I'm sorry. I did not mean to cut you off with that description. No, that's fine. And yeah, I have no idea about the goblins or if that's a normal thing or not. Can I ask the DM if Alphonse would remember if goblins were the help? Uh, certainly, Alphonse, you would have no recollection of that being the case. Yeah. Just gonna hold on to that for later. Utsk says, uh, "Come along, just this way, not far now." Um, a word of advice for your stay here: um, you'll want to perhaps um, be cautious which rooms you enter. Um, there are other guests at the manor uh, currently. Um, the Lord's chambers, and he gestures behind him. Um, well, I'd suggest leaving that alone, um, at least perhaps until after you speak with uh, Mistress Sadia. Um, well, anyways, uh, follow me. And you hear the, the sort of crashing of plates and uproarious uh, singing and uh, like body singing and laughter and the sounds of revelry happening from just beyond the door, Vlad, that you're passing uh, at the moment. Usk seems intent on continuing on. I look very puzzling at it. Hey, it sounds like there's a party in that room. What's going on? Um, just, uh, just some, um, just some guests of the, the manor of, of, of a sort. Um, Mr. Sadia can, can tell you more. You know, you're being real squarely, friend. Maybe that's just his personality. Maybe his social anxiety. I don't know. Also, your personality sucks, holiday, friend. <laughs> oh. That was very rude. You, you wound me, sir. Uh... <laughs> oh, I start patting Usk on the sleeve. I'm like, don't listen to him. You know, they customs are very exotic. Um, and I don't think he meant to offend as I stare Noir in the eyes with the look of PM. <laughs> what? what I do? I was, I was being honest with the Would you prefer I lie? No, I prefer that if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. I, I sincerely never appreciate your, your honesty, um, sir. Um, Vlad, you said your name was? Yes, yeah, Renee. Well, um, I hope that over time, you shall come to um, appreciate me more. I will endeavor to. Um, oh. I will endeavor to be a ser of service, however, however I can. Um, please, please come along. He gestures you along. The look. <laughs> the look. <laughs> I didn't say anything in response because I didn't have anything nice to say. <laughs> You turn to the corner and um, you enter a, a, a little nook, sort of nestled at the end of the hall, snug against a set of stairs that climb up to uh, the a third floor of the estate. There are thick, thorny vines that adorn the wall. However, it seems to not really feel out of place, strangely. Um, there's a pair of chairs that sit with a small table and a basket of berries between them, as if someone has been uh, enjoying the view here recently. The view? Is there a view to the outside? There is. It's not necessarily spectacular, but um, there is a view, and um, it does overlook a sprawling valley and rolling hills beyond that are covered in autumnal hues, just trees for miles and miles or a thick sort of mist seems to um, some miles away. Hey, Noir, are we in the Feywild right now? Uh, I'm gonna assume Noir would know if we were. <laughs> let me let me let me do the let me do the test. <laughs> no. How does the air taste? <laughs> it does um feel to you, Vlad, as if um, there is a certain familiarity here to what you've Wait. experienced in the family. Hold on. 
but not this is not your home this is not this is not what you're used to um you would be aware however that the feywild can be a very diverse and strange and unpredictable place and there's a certain aspect of there's a certain quality of what you're experiencing here that gives you the suspicion that this might in fact be the feywild or adjacent all right so the answer is complicated so kind of if it is the Feywild, it's not, it's not anywhere close to the blocks I hung out. Oh, well, according to my research, the Feywild is an infinite plane that stretches out beyond imagination. Yeah, but some parts of it suck a little less, less than others, so... That's true. Does, do you come from a place that sucks or not sucks? I come from a place that kind of sucks. Gotcha. So on the suck scale, we're doing okay? We're doing okay. Like, where I came from, it sucks at about a 4 out of 10. Uh, this place, feeling like a 3. But uh, we just okay. got here, so plenty of time to be disappointed. Okay, only a 3. Okay, wow. We, the, on that suck scale, we're, we're doing great. <laughs> is lower or high? Which is, yeah. which is better? I guess 10 out of 10 would be, like... Listen, stay true to the stay true to the Feywild. The numbers change in their meanings. Don't stop your research. Uh, Some days one's a good number, other days tends to one. So the odds of a hag jumping out of a closet and feasting on our corpses is hopefully kind of low? Uh, I don't think it'd be a hag. It was way too pretty here. Look at those flowers. They're blooming real strong. That's true. It's more like, it would be more like a, uh, a satyr just out of its mind. Shooting oh. us all the crossbows. That's what I'm feeling. That's the vibe we're getting. Shark's still here. Carla just gives you a oh, yeah. Bit of a Where's eye Steve? <laughs> my um, my Faye that I summoned. Oh my yeah. god. Did who, he make it through the portal? Is he with no, us? Not currently, although, oh. you know, you, you might certainly be able to. Steve. Yeah, you might. Ser Steve might make a reappearance uh, at any moment if you were to choose to expend another spell slot. Maybe next time I summon a Fey, I'll, I'll summon a less intelligent one so I don't feel so bad sending him <laughs> to their death. Less exploitative, maybe. Oh my gosh. Um, Usk angles up a, a narrow staircase that's kind of uh, slightly crooked and, and leaning, but still very functional as he ascends upwards into a nook of the eaves of, of, of the manor. Do you, you follow him upstairs? Or anything that you're doing here before before going uh, on. Uh, Maze does take a second to pull his sickle out and cut one of the flowers off the vines and oh. puts it in one of his books. Oh, that's sweet. I'm yeah, gonna... it's, a, it's a magnificent bloom. Um, I'm going to grab some of the berries and put them in my little conjured cup. They look uh, mouth-wateringly delicious. Uh, uh, something I've read... Be very careful what you eat in the fae, but I'm gonna. Maze takes know. a berry from her cup and eats no, it. No, no, no! Usk looks back and says, "Oh, that's very good advice." Did um, you eat it? Yeah. Oh no! Maze is uh, that's a tasty, to that is a tasty berry. Good berries. Uh, I'm gonna climb up his chest and start like opening his eyes and like <laughs> shining <laughs> light into <laughs> each one to see his pupils. I'm like, "Are you okay?" Are you seeing I, anything? Ow. Yeah, I I've seen you. Oh. Okay. Okay. Anybody I don't see where the next on the stair bed? is, so I'm just kind of walking blind right now. Um, Boosk leads you upstairs into a um, a, a strange-looking quarters. Uh, it's half office, half bedroom. It's a scene of some amount of overgrowth that evidently has been carefully managed. Where once was a rather spacious living quarters, the space is now filled with twisted and coiling roots and vines. Soft green moss and clover grows through the seams of the floor, its invasion bringing subtle bits of greenery to an otherwise very brown room. Of the numerous windows that line the wall of the room, only a few of them let light filter in. The rest are overgrown with vines. Um, but the, 
the magnificent window to the north offers a, a quite spectacular view. The room features a large wardrobe, a fine writing desk, a four-post bed that's taken on a, a life of its own, and the rest of the space appears to be worn and water-damaged, but uh, structurally sound. It's just us. It's just you and Usk, and he says, "Ah, um, good. Um, I will um, procure some some chairs um, and and refreshment." And he goes to, "Please wait here a moment. I will be right back." Dibs on the bed. Wait, um, I, where where are you going? Usk looks at you. Uh, I think um, I'm good standing, to be honest. Well, well um, this is. Oh, very well, and he uh, he goes to he goes to fetch chairs. Wait, what? He just left us in here? Oh my god! He said he'll be right die. back. He's coming back. I don't. He just yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> Is this yeah. when the so, ceiling falls in? Like hmm. yeah. Okay, while he's gone, I'm gonna like scurry over and peek at all these letters. Ooh, yeah, Maze is totally down for that. I'm right. just starting, stuff. just looking at everything. Just uh, are you doing a, a first a, a quick survey or more of a thorough investigation? Uh, how much time do you think I have, guys? Uh, I'll do the quick survey if you want to post well, okay. more detail. Survey to see what type of papers we got, and if anything looks interesting, then I'll dive deeper. Like if it's a grocery list, well, I guess that'd be interesting, but. <laughs> Where do they shop? Are these le are these letters? Are these journals? I just want to know what it is. Sure, you can blind roll an investigation check for me. Gotcha. Um, can I know off the top of without rolling? Do I know what language everything is written in? Yes. Uh, you see several books and papers on the desk. They appear to be largely in uh, Elven or perhaps. Let me check your languages. I know Common, Gnomish, Primordial, and Sylvan. You would recognize Elven, although perhaps not read it. You would also recognize Sylvan, which you do know. Okay. All right. Uh, I sent you my roll. Yeah. I'm just gonna try to like until I hear him coming back. I'm gonna try to get something from it. Yeah. Um... The, the writing desk is one of the only clear surfaces in the room. There are several notes and letters that are scribbled in a precise handwriting um, in a very bold purple ink. Um, the notes themselves appear at first survey. They're mostly written in Sylvan. Um, and they appear to be fairly mundane missives to various people in the house you see one note that has to do with um provisioning additional furniture that has been otherwise uh, broken and it needs to be replaced or repaired uh you see a note that has to do with um the need to deal with what appears to be uh the, the word you don't necessarily recognize but it says bramblefly um, that has roosted uh, in the eaves. Um, it also, you see uh, a note that is in a different handwriting, perhaps to Usk rather than from him, um, in a, a different sort of flowing hand, also neatly written, but it's definitely different handwriting. It's in Sylvan, and it seems to be um, a set of practical instructions for duties that Usk ought to perform during this time of uncertainty. Basically, like a, a, a sort of task list for Usk. Times of uncertainty. Do I see who that's from? There's no, um, there's no name attached. Uh, you sense that the note is written with a certain degree of familiarity. That Usk must know who it's from without there needing to be a, a name attached. Okay. Got it. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Then I'm gonna kind of like slide back away. Just in time, too, as Usk returns through um, the door. Uh, he makes a couple of trips, but he's clearly stacked some chairs outside, and he brings enough chairs for everybody. Uh, he brings, a, a, there's of course a tea set over here that um, he's got hot water in the kettle, he's got 
tea, he also has brought a variety of bottles from uh, of uh, alcoholic variety. Ooh. Flat. Uh, you just said the magic word. All right. Ample. I'm um, gonna conjure my own chair. It's gonna be this ridiculously feminine, poofy, like throne-looking thing that's mm, extremely nice. plush and has like stars all over it. And I'm gonna sink into it. It's like too big for me. Luce looks at you um, approvingly, and he he says, "Well, that looks very comfortable. I don't oh, suppose you can make me one." I wonder how many items I can make at once. Hold on, let me check my features. <laughs> I maybe I can. Maybe uh, just sits on the ground. Conjuration. There's a chair made available to you, uh, Maze, if you wish. But he still he sits on the ground. And he puts his drink up on the chair, like okay. it's a little side table. As you do. Yeah. As you do. Wait. I'm just to... grabbing a bunch of bottles and heading straight back to the bed. I gotta oh, go to uh, toss me one. You can only make one, one, Scarlet. Okay. That's do I ever get more later right on? In the middle of the bed. No, you don't, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Well, um, I can let you borrow my chair after, but I can only take of, one at a time. <laughs> this is my chair. It's small, so this could look really silly. <laughs> well, it's good that um, we are now uh, here with a moment to speak. I, of course, we could have talked downstairs, but um, things are rather complicated here at the moment. And as I mentioned, I'm in great need of your help, and I just wish to confide in you in, in private. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of already on a job, but it, I feel like it's the same job, so yeah, what you got? Well, I, I need to escape this place. I need to find my way back. I, I've been here for years, I think. I, I don't know how long it's been. The sun only ever rests at the same point on the horizon, and it's its like it's just moments from sunrise or, or sunset all at the same time, and there's no way to tell one day from the next. Some seem comfortable in this place, but I... I am... I find myself unraveling. I, I need to get out of here before I'm entirely undone, and, and I believe that... Well, I believe that Lady Elsieth might have a way to do just so. So, I'm gonna, like, Elfon's sort of stares daggers at Usk. So, when you said you could help us, you meant that we could help you. Well, yes. Um, but in so doing, um, we might all find what we're looking for, I think. I mean, I was gonna get out of here no matter what. I'm not staying at this place. This place is awful. <laughs> Did you say Lady Elseth? Lady Elseth, yes. Hey, we were that ghost that I, the guy that we escorted, mm. he mentioned that was an important guest. Oh, yeah. Uh, a talented arcane mage. Illusionist, I sorts. think it was, yeah. Something of this sort. Um, all right, Lady Elsia. She is your ally, Usk? I am sure she would be. Lady Elsia has ever been kind to me and well, to all the peoples of Raventree Estate. Um, she is, for want of, well, for lack of Lord Darius and I don't know what happened to the others of the family. She is, I suppose, um, the lady of the house now. Although, or at least she would be, or she was. I thought you said Lady Silvario was the lady of the house. Well, you see, it's, um, it's rather complicated. Um, lady Elsieth is... Uh, dealing with some certain predicaments that um, preclude her from helping me, the, or I suppose you either. Um, we need to, we need to bring her back. She's not, um, she's not here right now. Where is oh, she? Boy. 
Well, um, she's... She's indisposed at the moment. Um, really, I would suggest that Mistress Sadia could tell you more about the lady's condition, for she is um, most closely assisting uh, Lady Elsia through her current um, Is trouble. she in, in the house, or is she outside? Yeah, I don't believe well. she's here. I, I have not seen her for quite some time. Listen, I don't, I'm, I'm so sorry. Please, go go ahead. Where is Mistress Thadia? Well, she uh, is very busy. She's all about, but I'm sure I can track her down and introduce you, or you can go looking for her. Um, I can suggest some places to look if you like. I do believe that if you were to um, assist uh, Mistress Sadia with some of the um, trouble that she's facing, she might be more... Um, inclined towards introducing you to Lady Elsieth. Are you the only one that wants to get out of here? Um, no. I don't want to get out. Oh, well, Alphonse. Excluding... Sorry, sorry, I, I meant the people who were here before we got here. <laughs> yeah, not, not the current people. Yeah. Excluding yourselves, um, I think that I may be um, a bit of a misfit here, a, a bit out of place, perhaps. Um, You're the only one that's looking for a way out. Everyone else seems so content and... Um, I'm going to start sitting at the berries. To everyone else, and, and I feel as if I'm going crazy. I feel as if I'm the only one who realizes that nothing ever changes, and every day just blends into the next day, and the manor is just... Look at it. It's going to rot all around me. I can't keep it clean. There's not enough people to do the work. It's... Oh, Usk, Usk, darling, darling. <laughs> I'm, like, going to console him. I'm going to look back. Maze, don't eat any more berries. Well, you took all the berries, so I can't. <laughs> I hide them behind my back. No eating of sketchy food. It seems like we might have a contentment spell. Maze and... puts the bottle of whiskey that he's been drinking out of back on the chair. I will say that I'm quite certain quickly that take it. Are, are not <laughs> covered. Um, but you should be cautious of uh, consuming other foods um, recklessly that some of them here have um quite unpleasant or unexpected um consequences i have read stories of unwitting visitors or guests partaking in the hospitality of a mysterious host and losing all will to leave or return to their lives enchantments through food, drink, or even the very air around them, the music they listen to, the clothing they wear. Do you think it's something like that? I um, had not considered it. I am not an expert in matters of enchantment, but it certainly seems <clears throat> as if everyone else here is under some sort of if not spell, at least they are all satisfied with their lot. They are all um, content with what's happening, and I just, I need to get out of here. How well, long have you I... been here? When was the last time you ate? Oh, yeah, I was I... going to say, I'm not the sweetest cookie in the cookie jar, but uh, how come you're not taken by the spell then? Well, um... Maybe it just doesn't fit me very well. I don't know. As I mentioned, I'm not an expert on these matters, and I do know that it's been quite some time. I eat, I drink, I sleep. Although I never know if I'm sleeping at night or, or during the day. There is no night or day. There's simply being. I, I just rest when I'm tired, but I am growing very tired. 
All right, I'm so uh, trying to keep this house from the perpetual chaos that erodes at it. What if you don't? What if I don't? What if I don't? It's as if he's never contemplated the idea. Oh, he does his job so well. It's easy so, to breathe in. It's a question, because uh, I'm figuring uh, this isn't my first adventure rodeo here. I'm thinking that we're going to have to start axing, uh, axing our way through this place until eventually somebody big and bad makes it a little bit harder to ax them, and then we ax them too. So is there anybody that we should uh, purposely avoid giving the ax to? Oh, you want to um, just kill everybody in here? I was going to say, that's kind of drastic. They, they can just, yeah. you know... It's oh. either that or be stuck here forever. I'm, think, I'm thinking giving the axe to everybody. You think oh, that oh, if we kill everybody in the immediate vicinity, a portal will open up and we will go home? Yeah, what about the only person who can <laughs> open the portal? It sounds like we'll be stuck here alone. Yeah. Well, I would not uh, condone the, the path of violence, but if you are determined to um, rescue uh, Lady Elsieth from her affliction by uh, conquest of might, I, if such is possible, then um, I am prepared for the means to satisfy the end if it results in me getting out of here. Yikes. Guys, yeah. I am an expert in interdimensional teleportation and travel. If we can figure out where we are, figure out some kind of spell or some kind of portal, I think I can try to make it work. Hey, we can do it your way. I'm just saying I'm an expert at getting kicked out of places. And you usually when a big guy starts swinging an axe, they tell him, beat it. Well, um, if you choose a path other than that of violence, I would suggest that you might um, seek to earn favor with the people here in the manor, um, and your best way of doing that might be to uh, assist them with their uh, relative concerns. The state of this place is presently in disarray, and while I could arrange a meeting straight away with the master of the manor, you would almost certainly be turned away as an unwelcome group of strangers. Helping things to get in order would make your arrival far more um, palatable. How long have things been out of order since you all got here? Or is this something, is something happened recently to change Oh, it's things? been getting worse recently, yes. Um, ever since Lady Elsieth has been away, um, well, things are getting a little bit uh, increasingly out of hand. <laughs> hey, my if friend, you said... Like... Oh, please, go ahead. I'm sorry, uh, you said uh, if you bring us to the master of the place, They'll turn us away, but we can't go anywhere else, so where'd they send us? Oh, um, well, you would certainly simply be turned away from an audience with... I think we would just be stuck in the house, meaning no. we wouldn't Who be allowed is... an audience. Who is the master? Lady Silvaria? Oh, no, I f I'm so sorry, I forgot you're new here. Um, that would be Lord Kierneros. Lord yeah, Kineros that sounds like the guy that needs a good accent. That's a that's a name oh, that's begging for an accent. I would certainly accent. not advise you to challenge Lord Kirneros in combat. He is a uh, peerless warrior. Oh, that sounds like a good death. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Noir, I will help you get that showdown if we can first figure out our ticket home. Just because he's the master of the house doesn't mean he knows how to... Yeah. They, we don't know what brought everyone here. It could be a natural phenomenon. It could be someone is pulling the strings or it could be something completely different. It could be an arch fay. Lord, Lord Kierneros is, is, is um, loyal and, and dedicated and, and most mostly honorable, I would say. Um, he is a peerless, as I mentioned, unvanquished champion. Um, oh. The house has, and he has been a fine uh, leader and source of great inspiration for the house. However, um, recently, um, he has become so preoccupied with the state of Elsieth that well, the house has fallen into disarray. Are they and a couple? It's um, complicated. Oh. 
Oh, jeez. Oh, okay, who, who's in charge? Elsie of Keranos or Sylvaria? Well, that's just the problem, you see. Right now, um, sort of, nobody's in charge. And I think that's really uh, a great deal of the issue. Um, Master Kirneros is, um, well, he's so preoccupied with Elsieth, and she is, uh, well, she is indisposed, and Silvaria, thank goodness, is mostly sleeping. Um, what is she mean? Silvaria is, um, yes, she is cruel. She is ambitious. She is cunning. It's fortunate that the great fairy dragon spends most of her time half asleep in her roost. I strongly believe that something should be done to remedy the situation, but no one here has the means to do so. Just gonna put the little check mark in my notes where I wrote possible dragon. Fairy dragon. I'll have to check my journal later to see if yeah. I have any ent entries on fairy dragons. As a druid, would I have any idea of like a fairy or fey dragon? And I'll let you roll a nature check. And Sweet. We'll see. Would our hobgoblin know anything about fairy dragons, seeing as he's a native? I would say that um, Vlad would know that there are varieties of dragon kind that live in the Feywild, that um, there are some varieties that appear both in the Feywild and in the Material Plane. However, there are some varieties of dragons that are very rarely seen outside the Feywild, and they are largely um, exotic and different from other types of dragon kind. I don't know, Vlad, if you feel like you've ever had an encounter with this type of creature before or simply know of them. I may know of them. Should I roll? If you'd like. Or I give you freedom to choose your own character backstory here if you have something from your past that you feel like you might weave in. Uh, well, I mean, if we're, if we're going, if we're going uh, with uh, what I know, I know that my great, 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 couple times over grandfather got on the wrong side of a prismatic track. <laughs> he got turned to crystals. Great. Mm. We keep him as an heirloom, but uh, he, he lost pieces <laughs> over time. Oh, God. <laughs> well, unless you wish to suffer um, a similarly cruel fate, I, I would encourage you not to seek out or antagonize Lady Silvaria, at least not without um, a great deal of caution. Yeah, I'm just gonna open to... up my check, my uh, journal input, uh, begging for an axing next to the name. <laughs> Do you know what kind of breath weapon a fairy dragon has? I'd imagine it'd be spontaneous and chaotic. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I you weren't talking that. to me. No, I was. Been... I was definitely talking to you. Oh yeah, let's see if I remember that. Uh, <laughs> just gonna roll. Holy crap! <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, as is the nature of uh, the Fey, things can be quite chaotic and unpredictable. However, you suspect with this role that the breath of a fairy dragon would be raw, arcane force. Yeah, they're just, they're just hitting you with the magic goo. It's a it's just a big hammer of arcane energy. It's a, it's really just it's unfortunate if it happens to you. All right. Um, how? Ooh, this is an important question. How big is Lady Sylvaria? Hey, that's hey, that's rude. No, 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 no. no. Um, you saw it's very the statue in the uh, in the foyer. Um, the statue is a somewhat um, smaller homage to the <gasps> lady. Oh my gosh, is she ancient? <gasps> like, is she world tree sized? No, like no, no, no. Um, she is. Um, well, she's large, but um, why are you asking these questions? You don't intend to fight her, do you? That would be. I mean, the more you're that talking about it, the more I'm getting. getting. You know, dragons, the. The older they are, the bigger they are, the more powerful they are, the more intelligent they are, 
the more dangerous they are. So I'm just trying mm. to gauge danger. Under the impression that I do not believe. I, I do not believe she is um, what you mean by ancient. Um, but uh, she is very dangerous, I would say. Oh, I and am she's exactly. mostly sleeping, and I would very strongly advise that you do not change that unless you uh, know exactly what you're doing. Yes, yes, I've that is never a great that. plan. I had thought that that was her, and she just slept as a stone version of herself. But oh no, no, no! That is a that is simply a statue. So is. Is there a place we should avoid if we don't want to disturb her? Ah, yes. Um, the, the Dreaming Tree to the far end of... to the north. Uh, you would know it. it just, you wouldn't be permitted to go there anyways. That's what I meant. You would be turned away and not granted an audience. Um, oh, that's who not... you meant when when you said the... so she is the master of the house. Well, no. Um, she and Lady Elsieth and Lord Kierneros, of course, but they are all, um, I'm sorry, it's very complicated. Are they allies or do they hate each other? Well, um, Lord Kierneros, um, tends to Lady Silvaria, but he does not care for her. <gasps> Lord Kierneros cares for Lady Elsieth, um, but Lady Silvaria and Lady Elsieth have a um, complicated relationship. It's a love triangle. Oh, they got a poly thing happening. You know, you uh, you love to see it. You know, a lot of people. <laughs> oh, need I don't. Things. I don't think it's. I don't poly. think it's an agreed upon poly I think, thing. I think here knows is going by. Oh, you see, you got to keep it ethical. That's the thing that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to these sort of things. Yeah. Ethical non-monogamy is the way to go. You know. <laughs> There are um, several ways that you could um, help. Although I am not an expert in this, I trust you to find your own way here. But if you were to provide aid to Madame Sadia, the Seneschal of the Manor would make a significant social footprint and foundation for you. She is influential and she could almost certainly um, get you what you need. You also might earn the support of the collective sprites who maintain the manor grounds, and although I'm reluctant to recommend it, you, you could perhaps earn favor with the Red Scullion, though um, I am reluctant to even consider what she might have in mind for any who would work for her. Is the Scullion her name or title, or is that a, a, a creature? What is Scullion? Oh, it is her title. Um, she surveys and is responsible for um, the manor kitchens and the preparation of food, which, um, well, that's a bit of a problem at the moment, for the revel is very hungry. Who is reveling? Oh, um, almost everyone these days, to be honest. Uh, it's quite a problem. Mistress Sadia can tell you more. Um, I would strongly suggest that you avoid um, the dining areas, though. Um, most who go to uh, join the frolic do not leave. Yeah, we keep uh, we keep get told uh, where we, we can't go and what we can't do. So I'm just gonna ask a question about something that maybe we can do. Uh, we're cut up and banged up pretty hard. Uh, where can we? I don't know. Catch some Z's. Oh, of course, of course. I can show you to um, some chambers where um, you would be able to rest. Um, is although... this chamber available? Um, uh, I this think this is his room. Well, this is, these are my quarters, but if you agree that you would um, like to assist in this endeavor, uh, I could certainly stay somewhere else if you find yourself fancying these rooms. Otherwise, there are others that, that you could use, but they are um, we can have our own to reach room. right now. They're, they're right uh, above the revel, or, or we need to pass carefully by the bramble fly, or... Well, now that you mention it, maybe it is best that you simply stay here. Yeah, I like your bed. Um... <sighs> What? I, it was a compliment. I, I, I was gonna say, are you hitting on them? I mean, I don't blame you. I mean, I mean, maybe. 
I will I will uh, relinquish my own chambers to you. There is but the one bed. If you wish for other accommodation, do let me know. Um, but I am reliant on you to do try and help. If you can restore Lady Elsieth, she will know what to do. I'm sure of it. I still don't. Oh, yes, absolutely. She's a good person. She has a kind heart and a keen mind. And she's banging the other lady's consort, apparently. <laughs> little home wrecker. Maze pulls out a little bag of nuts and just starts to see some gossip. Ah, that's just that. One more question, Usk. You said we came from the Raven Tree Manor. Right? Well, yes. We're in the Raven Tree Manor right now. Well, yes. Do you know what the third place is? The third place? <gasps> the other portal. What do you mean, the other portal? The portal that was opened had two colors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One came here. One was, what, what was it? Magenta... Or- Violet and then burn Auburn. Sienna. Auburn. Yes. What are you talking about? Your portal was kind of shifting back and forth between two places. I think, like, you know, it was kind of a V intersection where there was you and then, like, this other one and then us, if that makes sense. I don't know. I, I And I look at Abigail. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it was definitely like a, a like Eldritch and blah, 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 in the other place. I um, it's probably where all your madness is going. I don't know anything about that. Hmm. We'll so keep hint, an eye out for that. I have a hint, a suspicion that you would fare much better there by your dreary looks. You don't fit the surrounding here. Well, I don't know what you mean. I am a. You don't have a servant of. The color on you. I'm a servant of Umberdale. I I belong at home. I. Umberdale? Oh, is that where we just came from? No, not necessarily. It seems to. He seems to have been mentioning a, a family name, perhaps. Oh. Umberdale. You look like an Umberdale. Have you met uh, others um, of? No, I or... mean, like you know, when you say like you look like a Charles or you look oh, like a <laughs> yes, yes, you look like an Umbridge. <laughs> well, you look like an Abigail. Oh, thank you. So you are Usk Umbridge. Yes, uh, Usk Umbridge. Um, yes, a servant of House Raventree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, wake me up when we're doing a favor or something needs an accent. Well, I will, I will leave you to, to rest. Certainly, you should um, tend to your wounds, and if you need anything, I'll stop back by. Um, I would suggest um, be careful down that way. And he points to the the door, the small door to the um, east. He says um, there is a, a bramble fly roosting in the eaves at the moment, and it will leave. I'm sure it will leave soon, um, but it's. Best not to be disturbed. Hey, um, Vlad, do you want to axe a giant bramblefly? Oh, I would not suggest <laughs> that. Well, why not? Sounds like a pest. Yeah, don't you want it gone? Well, well I can be um, a bramblefly. I think some here are rather fond of them. Oh, it's like not a danger thing it's an ethical thing oh it's it's dangerous uh but um <laughs> well it's not really don't wake me up with false promises of axing <laughs> we, have to get, we have to get past it to to get to our quarters well that's we... what i was mentioning there are there are rooms um down the halls to the east but it would require us to pass by the the solarium and um are there at least more beds there there are <laughs> yes as good as this bed is, I don't want to share it five ways. Oh, well, I okay. was just gonna make my own little nook. 
I was just going to grow some moss on the ground. We can go if you, if you um, promise uh, not to disturb the, the bramble fly, or you can stay here, uh, whichever you prefer. Okay, who is attached to the bramble fly so that... Yeah, if we squish one, we definitely don't go, oh, hey, yeah, I totally just killed this bug in your room. Yeah. Well, um, Lady Silvaria is relatively fond of them. Oh, the sleeping dragon lady. Oh, well, she's sleeping. She won't know. What if we protect all the bramble flies and gain her favor? <laughs> protect them from what? I don't know. People you. might want to squish them. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, that's a good answer. <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, it's good to know that the Lady Silvari, Silvara, yeah. Silvaria, third time's the charm. Silvaria's fond of the bramble flies. Yes. Hey, look, Magic Dragon might be our easiest, like, close ticket out of here, you know? Yeah, good. There are you. dragons who are well- There are known. several bramble flies, and if um, the others were to return and find- um, well, find one um, dispatched. It could uh, provoke them into a frenzy. Where do they usually hang out? Well, uh, lately, uh, here in the solarium, which is a bit of the problem. Well, um, wh what about, like, where is their natural? Maybe we can relocate them. Oh, I don't know. Um, they seem to leave for some time and then return with, well, things. Things? Endangered? Relocating them? Well, we'll be in danger if we <laughs> kill them. <laughs> well, she's asleep. She won't know. Yeah, she'll. Um, I mean, wait, I wasn't supposed to agree. We don't... I feel like how many times Usk says, don't wake her up, let's keep it that way, Ugh, it tells me her sleeping state is not very stable. Yeah, he said um, half sleeping. I don't know what that means. But... I'm just saying, do we want to make her our enemy, or do we want to not think burn we... that? Why, why don't you um, take a moment and, and rest and recover? Are you needing of sleep at the moment, or simply some time to um, recover from your trial? I think um... at that point you hear the thunk of Vlad's armor hitting the floor. Oh. <laughs> as many blankets and pillows as you can spare. All right, I, I will bring bedding uh, for here. Perhaps once the situation in the manor is more stable, I can arrange for you to have more um, individualized accommodation. I, I'm sorry, I feel as if I'm a terrible host so far, but I really wasn't expecting you. Welcome as your arrival has been. How did you see us, by the way? Last question. You called to us through a portal. How did yes. that happen? Did you? actively seek us out or was this an accident it's as if i well it's as if the air in front of me started to take on a strange hue and shimmer and it's as if i was looking through a lens at some other place and and i saw you as figures and i saw you were walking towards me with almost as if you were greeting me i don't know but then behind you rose these terrible figures from the gloom I, at first, you didn't see them. I called out to warn you, and and Has then you turned and you saw them, and they were they were terrible. Um, Has anyone else come here the way we did? I don't know. Not for some time. Not, not in the way that I've experienced it. There have yeah. been in the past um, sudden and unexpected arrivals from time okay. to time but so so people do come here they, everyone here is not the same crowd that's not been here from the last. original oh yes um there are some who have been here for quite a long time like myself and lady elsie of course but um many of the others have kind of arrived at various stages i i don't know how long it's been got it I Any would like questions? to insight check all of that, please. Yeah, sure. Give me a give me a blind rolled insight check. I think we need to distinguish when we meet people if they're part of the original guests of the manor when the whatever happened happened, or if they're new arrivals, and where they are from. Vlad, you are sh you are pretty sure that Usk does not know. I'm going to bed. 
<laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Usk makes to depart unless you have any remaining questions for him. There's always more questions, but we'll let him leave because we gotta. <laughs> he gotta leaves leave. a small bell on the desk and says, um, "You can ring this if you need me, and I will. Um, I will return." You leave okay. all, all the papers. I can hear there. it anywhere. Um, wherever I am, I'll know that you've rung this bell. That's good to know. Does he leave all the papers there that we can just sort of read? <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't seem to really care that you would be able to go snooping through his things. Okay. okay. We're definitely going to do that. Yeah, Maze is about yeah. to go snooping through his things. It's maybe either as if he doesn't care or perhaps the thought never crossed his mind. Um, but it doesn't seem like something that he's thought to worry about. Okay, so he's got he is not keeping secrets from us, but there still might be interesting information here. Should we snoop first or should we sleep first? Oh, snoop first. You want to be able to think, oh, well, we already <laughs> lost Vlad. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll wake him if there's some axing. Yeah. So, yeah, Maze just like casually starts opening drawers and looking behind curtains and at one time turns into a monkey to check the top of the bed frame and oh stuff. Oh my goodness, yeah, go go ahead and roll an investigation check. Vlad's getting some rest. Charlotte also is kind of tending to a couple wounds that she sustained and patching herself up. Yeah, Mains, um, you certainly find the obvious things, like the papers on the desk, the tea service, the bed, uh, a wardrobe full of um, clothes, fine clothes in the wardrobe, each cut for Usk's uh, sort of slender size. Um, but there's really not much to this room beyond what immediately meets your eyes. Is, is one of the, the things in the wardrobe like a feathered mantle, kind of like what he's wearing right now? Um, there are a couple of different fashionable suits and coats of different styles. There isn't one that's exactly like what he's wearing uh, today or at the moment, but there are some other uh, similarly fashioned um, sets of attire. May Maze pulls one out and puts it on, then like goes to Abigail's like, ah, ah. Hey, that's someone else's clothes, you weirdo. And I like bat at his outfit. <laughs> Fine, he puts it back. <laughs> it fits right. really good though. You should go back to the tailor once we get home. Well, if it is the party's intention to do so, you may all take a long rest. Yes, I, I conjure the fluffiest bestest pillow anyone has ever laid eyes on. It's like big enough for me to like curl up like a little cat on. Usk does stop by briefly with you know, armfuls of spare bedding and blankets and pillows and stuff. Nothing but you none have is as plush. comfortable. None can it. compare to the plushness. Of... It's like a squishmallow. Like it's just <laughs> all of you guys would probably hate it. It's like not firm enough. I forgot how to take a little rest again. No worries. <laughs> On your character sheet, um, right under hit dice, you can click L, L rest. Oh, there it is. To the right of hit points, you have hit dice, yep. and then you can click long Yay! Rest. I'm back, baby! Yep. Maze is going to take like a bunch of the blankets and pillows, throw them on the ground, then just turn into a small bunny and burrow under it and take a nap. Nice. <laughs> um... Time passes, and you all awaken, feeling refreshed, although you all have the weird sensation that um, it almost feels like you just fell asleep or that you've been sleeping for quite some time and you can't quite put your finger on which it is. Uh... Well, I can see how that could drive somebody mad after a century or so. Oh yeah, I mean, I prefer it to be dark. 
obviously, and I gesture to my purple skin. <laughs> so this like sunset, it's like, it's like you're always edging, right? You're like, oh, it's about to be beautiful nighttime, but it's just the sun's just hanging there, and you're like, mm, I'm getting that dopamine hit of that feeling like, oh, it's about to be dark. It's just, it's just never, just never follows there. through. Yeah, I guess for for you it would be like if it was a dark and spooky night, but then you see that it's sunrise, and you've been craving the day, but it never comes. And I definitely spent a lot of time, you know, dusk work. So, uh, just check it with uh with all of you while we don't have the, I don't know, butler. Yeah, I'm gonna call him butler. While we don't have the butler with us, um. We, we, we do understand this. At some point, there's going to be a whole lot of fighting, right? Yeah, probably. I don't think we're supposed to be fighting the guests. I think we're supposed <laughs> to save them. That's what the, <sighs> the books always tell me. Is, you know, the hero saves everybody. <laughs> I read, like, but, half the library at the school. Kind of also, funny. there's a chance we might fight a freaking dragon, so who's excited about that? We, you, we don't have to fight the dragon! Ah, uh, dragons are yeah. intelligent beings. Yeah, and they're tough as nails too. Exactly. God, like, stop trying to look for nonviolent solutions. <laughs> <laughs> um, out the great window to the north, you see a sprawling tangle of trees and hedges. You see some small outlying buildings. You see the gleam of glass, a building that has a glass roof, you see a, a meandering maze-like tangle of hedges. And then far beyond to the north, you see the boughs of a great golden and orange tree. It is very large and it is looming above everything else on the horizon and it is gleaming with sun and reflected light. Is that the sleeping tree? I mean, I am kind of interested in a tree called the dreaming tree. Oh, the dreaming tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get a bad vibe from that tree. I got a bad vibe from this entire place, to be quite honest with you. I think it's going up the, the suck scale. Is it up? Are we at a four or are we at a five? I think we're. I'm thinking we're sitting at a hard four to four and a four to quarter. Oh, so maybe I just vibe too much with people. I'm, I'm kind of just. <laughs> I'm digging it here. You don't think I like your style, friend? Thank you. <laughs> much too bright here. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Oh, uh, you know it helps with that the boobs. The boobs. Oh no, I mean, the booze. Yes. Oh. Oh no, eyes respectfully, only on the eyes. Until, never mind. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I am uncomfortable now. <laughs> like, <laughs> walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Which door does Vlad walk out? This one. <laughs> All right. Are you heading downstairs or are you summoning Usk um, to come to you? He's not actually there. <laughs> I think I want to snoop around without Usk. Oh, yeah, no, I totally want yeah, to. Yeah, you're, you're totally around. snooping around without Usk. Okay. Um, you make your way down to the second floor and I'll, I'll pull you back down here. And then oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it gets like it's really smaller than I remember. Yeah, it's just the different different scenes for the different levels of the house. Uh, uh, uh. I love the light effects. It's so pretty. I know. I know, right? It is giving me a spooky vibe, though. There is something just a little unnerving about this all. I will point out there's a small door right here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, I did not tell. It's actually uh, incorrectly configured on my end. I've just noticed that. Let me... Oh. Uh, can I do a can I like do a retcon real quick and say that during that long rest I did perform my uh, fine familiar ritual? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If there's okay. anything else that um, you all would have done during a long rest as like a preparatory action, 
the, the window of opportunity is still open to, to let me know that you did that. Okay. okay. I, I also found my familiar. I don't know all of the crazy uh, artificer stuff that Charlotte can do either, so I'll just assume that she did whatever it is that she would have done uh, okay. to prepare for the day. Yeah. Make okay. potions, summon the cannon, the normal stuff. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, the usual stuff. I mean, awesome magical buff. Yeah, I would have my familiar, and it would be an owl that roosts. It's like a little, little owl, like one of Aww. the cute, cute ones. And it's just kind of hiding in the brim of my hat until I needed to do something. Like one of and, the teacup yeah. owls? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, and it. so it hangs out with me for an hour. I, wait, no, 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 no. It hangs out with yeah, for an hour. It's not concentration, though. I think uh, Find Familiar is permanent, right? Find Familiar is permanent. Yeah. It just takes, I think it takes an, an amount of time in order to I conjure the familiar. But it does one... take an hour, but I don't think it's a permanent. Yeah, until is it, it dies. Oh, it, until if it it's, dies? Yeah, yeah oh. if it's the standard Find Familiar, then it's... Yeah. Uh, hour to summon with it's your, whatever it's you need. Permanent permanent. Friend. Only reason right. that I'm resummoning again is because I didn't bring him with me uh, yes, when we cross planes. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. My little owl is. In if you ever hat. want me to pull your uh, token out for your familiar so it can do Holy something if... differently from you, let me know. I can do that. Okay. Otherwise, I'll just assume that it's kind of hanging yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. I've just got a big it. obnoxious raven. Oh, I think nice. my little puffball cotton ball owl is always looking at your raven. And it's got like giant eyes that like <laughs> yeah, it's just it just looks like a cotton ball with big eyes in the middle. And once in a while it goes Ooh, and then you just see its little mouth. Ooh. It's little Dr. Seuss character. <laughs> squawk just squawks in reply. <laughs> ah! <laughs> is your raven's name Squawk? Yes. I love it. I I forget. I, I don't think I've come up with the name for my owl yet. I'll think of something appropriate. Well, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna check this door out. I'm gonna get it. Yeah, it seems to lead, perhaps, to some exterior, given the windows to either side. It's a little hard to tell. The door itself is tilted a little bit and partially coming off of its hinges. You could easily open it. It doesn't appear to be locked. Wait, you said there's windows around it? Can we look out to see what's on the other side of it before we go opening up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see a, a crumbling little balcony on the other side of the door through the window right here. And um, that balcony seems to overlook uh, the exterior grounds a little bit. And perhaps, well, it's hard to tell if it gives you access to anything else. Hmm. I don't know. Do you guys want to go outside or? I mean, I'm always down for an adventure walk. We're already on an adventure walk. Um, Pretty sure anywhere we go here is gonna be technically an adventure walk. Alphonse, do you remember? Oh, ah! oh. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> you open the door, the balcony, um, little loose pebbles of stone start kind of uh, breaking off under your collective weight, although it does seem to be holding you. It doesn't seem to be the most stable perch. Part of the balcony that it seemed formerly would have spanned the whole space has crumbled and fallen away. Um, Vlad, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull you, you back. Yeah, I think you just stepped off into space. Unless Whoops. you're intentionally going for a jump. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, part of the balcony it looks like it would have originally kind of spanned this entire space, but most of it has crumbled and fallen away. Probably because of the large tree that's now growing like right in the middle of part of the house and part of the balcony. And it just seems to have, everything has broken free and broken away before the, the trunk of this tree. I'm gonna looks, step back. Uh. <laughs> looks like there's a path down there. I think I thought- the... There is a path, yeah, there is a narrow path below that seems to flank around the sides of the house running north and south. Um, it's about, uh, let's see, it's about 20 feet, actually a little more than that, 25 feet down. Um, it, you know, you're not super high, but you know, it is a, it is a fair drop to get down to ground level. You could presumably manage it perhaps, um, if you were careful or, um, 
not careful. <laughs> I mean, I fell for most of my life, so if you guys want to go for a fall, I can make sure you get down. I there. mean, I can totally take that jump. It's no problem for me. I got strong I... calves. I could send... Vlad looks like someone who doesn't skip leg day. Not at all. Not definitely. In that armor every day is leg day. Squats for the thoughts. <laughs> Them intrusive thoughts. I'm trying to imagine what a hobgoblin thought looks like right now. <laughs> just tossed out. It's just, just a lot, you know. Wait, lot are are the hobgoblin? girls, the ones that wear the like butt scrunched leggings to the gym and a sports bra and they're yoked. Like, Absolutely. They, they do like figure comp. They have like little no fact, Tom Goblin women are much stronger than the guys. They just pick us up and toss us. Oh, <laughs> it's one of those matriarchal species. They're like seven, eight feet tall. <laughs> snoo, snoo. <laughs> Death by Snooze. Death, Death by, by Snooze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like okay. it here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's this door right here then. Vlad's <laughs> uh, ranking of the environment is changing by the minute. Um, <laughs> going around opening doors method of exploration. Musk did imply that, you know, you could kind of meander around, although he certainly cautioned you about a few different places that you might wish to avoid. But he did actually identify those places other than the dining area. Yeah, that party room, which is the one room that I want to go into more than anything because he told I, me not to. I wonder who the guests are that are partying. It seems I mean, one, one way to find out for sure is by going to the place um, he told us not me, to go let to. Let me pull you guys back a little bit to make sure it's clear what you're what you're yeah, seeing see. here. Um, <laughs> the platform, yeah, the you open the door and the hallway ends abruptly as everything has broken away before you. And what you're seeing is the open space beneath you on the first floor of a completely overgrown library uh, <gasps> where the hallway ends and drops down. The room is largely collapsed, so if you were to step past this doorway, you would be falling down to the floor below. That's um, a library? You see in the library below, small sort of scuttling forms moving about the stacks, as well as a great uh, leafy sort of tree uh, in the middle of the room, uh, moving strangely. Uh, I'm going to shake my head and my little owl cotton ball is going to kind of flit down a little bit and I'm going to look through its eyes. Hmm, sure. Down in the, in the library? Yeah, but that, like, just kind of, like, hover just a little, like, carefully, you know? Yeah, not, sure. Not, not trying Sorry. to get... Yeah, so, um, as you're familiar kind of flits around the, the library. Uh, let me adjust this. The library looks to have seen better days. Uh, most of the flooring on the ground is rotted and collapsed away to bare joists and foundational stonework. What remains of the flooring is shored up and supported by huge coiling tree roots that are breaking through the stonework below. At the west end of the room, there are three massive trees that frame uh, the, the structure of the house. So here, uh, sorry, here, here, and here, of course, this one that you were just next to. Um, though one of them is distinctly strange and seems to have a almost humanoid-like face and arms. That's this tree here in the middle. It seems to be presently using an oaken limb like a, a long finger to scrawl something into a great book that it's holding. Wait, On is the it ground, frozen in that pose or is it actively doing it? It's actively doing something. <laughs> and um, 
on the ground, scurrying in and out of the between the large bookshelves, a small team of goblins seem to be busying themselves, taking books off of shelves and putting books onto shelves and scurrying between the roots and legs of the great librarian in the center. I'm going to whisper, who did Oosk mention? Um, wood? Oh yeah, I was actually kind of thinking, of, I was like, oh, maybe the guy's made of wood, but no, that would make sense why he can't come talk to us because he's a, he's a tree. It's probably a dumb idea, but I'm going to ritual cast me some detect magic. Good uh, idea. Well, or maybe, maybe a good idea. I'll come back to you in a moment after your spell is mm -hmm. realized, but since it takes you a moment to accomplish that, I'll just check and see if anyone else is doing anything uh, in the, the few minutes while Vlad is performing his ritual. What's the name you mentioned? Something Wood, wood Willow? Willow Woodfellow. Wood? Woodfellow. Yep, the fellow made of wood. I'm just gonna call out in Sylvan. Would you be Woodfellow? Your voice resonates through the arcing boughs of the 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 library. So you'll notice that um this entire second floor of the library has largely collapsed and um, sort of fallen away. And so it is kind of a whole like two tiered arrangement right now. There are sort of gangplanks looping around the outside of the second floor and across uh, from top to top of the bookshelves, uh, forming sort of some makeshift bridges. But the your voice kind of resonates down to the open um, chamber of the library below. And, um, yeah, let's see here. You guys want me to drop a rope? Do we just climb down, or do we want to go take the stairs and then try to find this room? Um, well, there is going to be a response to... Oh, sorry. I'm just... Making sure I pull up the right information here. Uh, here we go. Uh, so, your voice rings out and the whole tree sort of leans back with a rustling of leaves and a creaking of boughs and it kind of tilts back and looks at you. And to be honest, it's so it's below us. Well, not much. The head of this creature is almost level with you. Um, and it kind of looks forward and says, oh, Hello. Um, visitors. Why don't you come down and speak with me? Okay. <clears throat> Fluffy is gonna... I'm gonna, like, stop connecting with Fluffy, and Fluffy's gonna, like, land on one of his little branches. Um, and Abigail's gonna, like, look at the group. Are we going down? The, among the boughs of the, this tree, there are numerous little sprites flitting about, tending to hanging fruit. Uh, although, some of the fruit actually looks like books um <gasps> it's a book tree we're going down where's that rope maze uh yeah okay okay <laughs> he wanders <laughs> off and starts uh wrapping the rope around the brazier around the corner up here and then tosses his one of two 50 foot ropes past everybody so that it goes down to below yeah easily you're only about 20 feet up so easily enough length of rope to to make it yeah i slide right down one by one you descend um and you drop down to the hallway below you and i'll pull you down to to the first floor You hear, as you drop, you hear the sound of spoken word around you, 
coming from behind the wall to the northeast, there seems to be some sort of recitation in progress. There's a multitude of individuals gathered around, and you feel immediately as if um, this is something that you might not wish to interrupt. Um, the Northeast alcove features a, a flat central stage of sorts where sprites and goblins con congregate to reenact stories and perhaps plays or, or other things. It's, there's something going on right now as a satyr is standing in the center of the stage and deeply engrossed in uh, reciting something from a great book that stands upon the open tome. Um, those of you who speak Sylvan would be able to understand and hear this. Those of you who don't, it would be in a language that you don't comprehend. I understand. I think yeah. I too. Whoops. <laughs> the audio is going <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's very amusing. I hope Matt, who's doing the broadcasting, can select a token so that everyone can hear. Uh, the audio touch. Uh, do I happen to see anything with the detect magic? Yes. Good question, Vlad. You do notice that... Um, just consulting things here. What's the range, the radius that you have? Let me go ahead. 30 feet. Put that on the... Ah, oh, what just happened? All right, sorry. Uh, it's 30 feet. Okay, yes, 30 feet. Um, the tome from which the satyr is currently reciting has a glimmer of magic about it. Um, I'm trying to think. I think that's all you get exactly where you are, but I know this lasts a little while, so I'll update you mm -hmm. as you move around. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, this guy just has like a really calming voice. No, I know, right? It's <laughs> very inviting, and and almost without intending to, you see that you've all just sort of gathered around to take in this recitation almost as if you gaze around and you see hobgoblins and satyrs and sprites and goblins all in rapt attention just sitting there nodding along and enjoying and and you find yourself almost soothed into a, a, a sort of trance-like state of just listening to the parables. Even those of you who don't speak Sylvan, there's something about the rhythm of vocalization that is peaceful to you. Uh, real quick, I would actually would like to focus on the book to see if I could see what kind of magic it is in there. Yes, uh, it does possess an aura of conjuration. Ooh. <gasps> I will quickly let Abigail know. <laughs> Just, uh, hey, Abigail. Abigail, hey. Yeah, hey, yeah, Abigail. yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. okay, yeah. I, I didn't think you heard me, so I said your name a couple times. Uh, that book that the, the, the Woodfellow's got. Uh, to be clear, I'm talking about not the book that Woodfellow has, but the book. Oh, so sorry. On, the, the, set. Yeah, the, the book that's on the lectern. Yes. Yeah. You, you see that book right there? Yeah. That book's, that book's magic. It, uh, the kind of magic it's uh it's it's got uh, illuminating all over it. Hydration. Yeah. I thought that would be interesting, right? Right. I need that look. Uh, are we stealing? Just as you're listening to each other from behind you, a voice says, "Little ones, are you coming?" Oh shit! Yeah, we're gonna come oh, get that thing later. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll wait also, till now we're done. We <laughs> okay, so no accent, but uh, stealing. I like your style, Abigail. Hey, no one gets hurt. <laughs> but if it's they farming. do... <laughs> I just want to look at it. 
hey, all right, who's that, talking over here? Yeah, let's go visit the tree. It's when, the great When Abs tree. wasn't looking, Maze grabbed a handful of the berries from up top. <gasps> <laughs> and he's gonna hand one to one of the sprites as he walks past. Um, one of the tiny sprites looks at you with some measure of amusement and considers your gift carefully, as if it's making a very solemn choice about whether to accept it or not. And it seems to gaze into your eyes as if it's taking the measure of you. Uncomfortable amount of gazing. The sprite's just really giving you the stare down. Gaze at Maze. I think they I think those two got something happening. Do you he continue pulls out offering a second berry? berry and holds two up to him? Hmm. Suddenly as if a decision has been reached, the sprite reaches out and takes just one berry from you. Um the first one that you offered. And clutching it under its arm like a great basketball. Um, it flits off um, with a look of kind of satisfaction on its face as if it has simply, if it's reached a, a, an outcome of, of some meaning. Hmm. I don't That's think Abigail saw that. That's like a week. That's cool. And then Maze follows after the rest of the party. Amazing, what were you the... doing? <laughs> Feeding locals. Wait, did you <laughs> offer a gift? Maybe. Oh god, that sprite owes you his firstborn child now. Hi, tree uh, guy. Hi, hey, children. Yeah, I'm walking towards the tree guy, but I'm trying to take a look at everything just to see if anything else. I uh, can't think. see you. The way over there. Mm. From over here. Mm. <laughs> uh, Vlad, you yeah. do see a gleam of magic uh, above you on the second floor to the south. There's a balcony, second floor balcony. Um, there seems to be a ring of some kind, uh, maybe 10 feet in diameter. Uh, that is gleaming and shimmering with uh, energy that seems to maybe not be particularly active, but maybe uh, latent or or idle in some way. Do um, I get a magic school off of it? Yeah, uh, that's going to also be conjuration. Um, hey, Squawks. <laughs> Daddy needs some new jewelry. <laughs> So I'm gonna walk in front of. Uh, I'm gonna walk alongside the group. Uh, take a seat, like just like crisscross applesauce, and uh, just kind of close my eyes, and I'm gonna be a bird for a hot second. Ooh! All right. I'll pull out your familiar. I've got Squawks' stats over here. Uh, one whole hit point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if there's anything you need me to roll for him, just let me know. I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, oh, Steph, I didn't know they had this. That's cool. Oh, wow. Um, how do you, I don't know how you would prefer to spell squawk, but I'll let you update. That. Uh, it's, it's in the, it's in the, uh, it's in the chat. Oh, gotcha. Yes, S perfect. U -W -A -K -S. I will give you ownership here of Squawks. And Squawks? just Squawks. throw this here next to you. Squawks. You should see. Yep, I see you. I'm going to change its little token name to match. So we all know what's going on here. Um, Yeah, nice. You're able to move squawks around as you survey the place. In the meantime, uh, Woodfellow in the center of the room um, sort of gives a slow, tremendous groan as wood shifts and rumbles. A face on the outcropping of, of trunk that seems like a long neck leans forward just slightly, faintly glowing eyes blink, blink myopically, and a slow smile creaks its way across the bark. Ah, guests. We have guests. Good. Good. 
Have you come for knowledge? Absolutely, I have. I'm staring at the tree fruit or the book fruit. <laughs> this whole new meaning to picking your brain. Uh, I am just it's being the tree a bird taking knowledge. that knowledge. <laughs> Well, um, I am, um, is a tree of sorts, and uh, I do have knowledge of a kind. Your analogy is appropriate. I was being literal. <laughs> oh, your description, then. Well said. Um, pardon me, but who are you? Oh, guests! We're guests! We just arrived last night. Or day. Oh. Hmm. Well, welcome to Raven Tree Estate. I hope your stay here is uh, pleasant. Hmm. I am a wood fellow, a humble hmm, custodian of the library. I'm looking at Alphonse. Like, fearless leader? <laughs> <laughs> so it snap out of it. Uh. Well, <clears throat> can I watch the words? Can I um, assist you, or are you just perusing the tones? Um, Usk mentioned we should introduce ourselves. Oh, oh, skill butler, um, yes. I know of him. You guys mm -hmm. get along? <laughs> oh, um, he is rarely returning the books that he borrows. Ooh. Ooh. I got in trouble for that once. It was pretty bad. Yeah, well, you took some very rare books from the library. I You're not mean, supposed to leave with those. <laughs> they're the ones that when you picked them up, your hands started to tingle. I thought that would be important. Yeah, that's why you leave them in the library. Anyway, <clears throat> Mr. Sorry. Woodfellow. <laughs> disrespectful to you, Woodfellow, I assume. Oh, I don't mind. We have many books here, and... If one goes missing, I can always hmm, grow a replacement. How long does that take? Oh, not but a short while. So, like, if I took a clipping of you, would I grow a new you or a book or like your kid? That is not how I reproduce. It would merely be a sapling. That is a weird question, Maze. Um, anyway. Do you <laughs> wish to reproduce me, little one? <laughs> oh, dear. I... Okay, okay. Hey, so um, what were all those fae folk doing over there, reading out of that super magical conjuration book. <laughs> oh, <laughs> subtle abs. The recitation is ongoing and has been for some time. What is it? What's going on? Uh, a reading dramatic or other literary event. Is it just, just entertainment, or is it, like, a religious thing? Oh. For those who like to 
to read and seek knowledge, I suppose. It is a manner of religion, but for others it serves merely as a diversion. Hmm. Easy way to pass time when time's endless. Speaking of diversion. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, Noir. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? What's going on? <laughs> I've noticed the raven is missing. <laughs> the raven's up in the up in Woodfellow's upper boughs. Yep. Is with Fluffy? Fluffy's been roosting in the mm. Check it just, out the sprites. Just peck, peck, pecking at the shiny. <laughs> what are you trying to get at, Norm? Uh the ring that we uh he saw up there? Ah, so when I when I mention a ring, I want to be clear. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a circle. It's not like a oh. ring you wear on your finger. It is a gotcha. it is a circle, and it's over it's over here uh, in the south side. There's up on a balcony. Um, ah, I can pull yeah. you up there if you need to, but I'll describe it for you first, and we'll see what you mm -hmm. want to do. Um, so there is a ruined but still standing wooden balcony that's overlooking the library right and um in its surface there is a round circular uh slightly raised platform in stone that is inscribed with some runic text okay um, in that case, yeah, I would still have him fly over there so I could try and gather some information on what that could be. He seems... Hmm. You're trying to be stealthy. Uh, yeah, for the most part. Vlad, Vlad honestly took a slight seat with crisscross applesauce close his eyes like he's meditating. Mm. Uh, and it's just doing some shenanigans through the bird. Sure. Um... Roll me a, a stealth check as your raven. Let's go, Squawks! Yeah! <gasps> oh, <old snap. laughs> All right, that's a 20. Um, yeah, Great. I mean, Woodfellow doesn't seem to, to react to, to what you're doing. Um, is there something in particular that you have come here to ask of me. I don't remember. Was there a specific question? Uh, I forgot I why Usk mentioned... Woodfellow. Usk mentioned that Woodfellow might know something about getting out of here. Oh. oh. Hey, um... But the way that he said it, it was sort of more like, not like Woodfellow definitely knows how to get out of here. It was like, Woodfellow yeah. knows things. Okay, um, hey... What fellow? Where are we? Other, where, where are we? Not Raven Tree. Like, where in the placement of the Astral Sea are we floating currently? Uh, you got that? I know some hmm, cosmological import. Hmm. We are in the wilds of the Fae, but. A seclusion of them, I would say. Oh, like a Debbie play. I say that to Maze as if he knows what the fuck that means. Are with ah, the cosmological concepts and metaphysical partitions of otherworldly dimensions, I see. I am a student on the subject matter, but you seem like a master. Mm. Flattery will get you nowhere, little one. I am far too mm, stoic for such niceties. Well, we're all trying to unpack and unravel those toxic sides of us. I'm sure you'll get there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. How did you come here? Uh, the same way I normally end up places by accident. Extra dimensional travel. That much is clear. 
But you did uh, not come through my gateway. Your uh, gateway. Uh, how do we use? Or, sorry, where is your gateway? Mord is mm, currently inoperative. Do you bring people here? Hmm. I have on occasion put out feelers, but no, I do not bring people here. I simply keep what is here. The knowledge of the library is enough for me. Could you send people back? If the portal were working, it would offer transit, yes. What's wrong with the portal? Yeah, if oh. you need just a jump start, I could kick that off pretty hard. Well, Maybe we'll use you for fuel. Um, I said that meanly. <laughs> it has been... Mm, uh, it has suffered some damage some time ago. The growth of this place is eaten away at <clears throat> its sigils. Um, the <clears throat> crystalline conduits which power its receptacles are presently vacant. Well, didn't you say something about crystals? I am unable to leave to retrieve them. Oh my gosh, we can get them. You would um, repair my circle? Um, yeah. It's a yeah. portal, isn't it? It's... Uh does offer transit for those who wish to reverse the realms. I, I, I'm scribbling this down furiously. When's Faze the last acts like I he's going to remember one? later. Squawk. Through Squawk's eyes, you notice that um, the tree has been partially carved out and it, almost as if it's extended the circle that now is built into it. There are space around the ring of the circle for six objects to slot into um, silvery metal receptacles. All six uh, currently uh, are empty. Might I attempt an arcana check through Squawk's eyes to see if I could piece together what this is meant for? I'm fine allowing you to learn anything that you can kind of learn visually. I mean, since you're not actually okay. there to investigate, but anything that you can see through Squawk size, yeah, you can you can roll on that for sure. All right, I'll, all right, let me try an arcade check here then, because well, I want to see uh, what's going on. Uh, yeah, it certainly is radiating with faint and faltering conjuration magic. You notice that. Certainly looks like this circle at one point might have been used to transport people or objects. On closer look, it seems like it's been heavily modified from other more standard teleportation circles that you've seen in the past. Okay. Uh, so with the 18, am I able to deduce if this is capable of planar travel? I wouldn't say that you're able to deduce that, but certainly okay. in... Certainly, in combination with what Woodfellow is saying, that mm -hmm. does seem to be the implication. Oh, okay. Uh, I think with that, uh, and kind of making, working to memorize the runes so I could give Abigail all the info, uh, I'm going to have Squawks fly on back. Mm hmm. Back. <laughs> Cacao, cacao. If you <laughs> find my crystals to restore the circle, I would be in your debt. Yes. Did somebody take them or did, was it an accident? What happened to them? 
Yeah, are we finding new ones, or do we have to find the old ones you already had? Um, absconded. What'd you say? Absconded. Oh. Absconded. Oh, I think that means taken. I've heard that word before, yes. I, I think I've heard that word before. <laughs> this tree uses very old dialect. I'm not that old. Absconded, past tense of abscond, to leave hurriedly and secretly, <clears throat> typically <clears throat> to avoid detection or of arrest for unlawful action, such as <clears throat> theft. I lead into Maze. He sounds like Professor Whistlebeard. <laughs> The way he just goes. Just keeps going and going. Yeah, that takes the longest time to say the shortest thing. Yes, absconded. Thank you very much. So they were taken. Do you know who might have taken them or what the motive would have been? Hmm, the rules with interest in preventing travel. Okay, so somebody doesn't want people leaving and they absconded the crystals Alphonse <laughs> <laughs> fucking whistle beard <laughs> he probably taught something really boring too like the history of runes yeah theory of theory <laughs> yeah um okay so well who doesn't want travel? Hmm. That is a good question. Hmm. Um, probably people that are content with being here. Woodfellow also, seems to be considering the question for a long time, almost as if he hadn't thought of it that way before. Oh. Hmm. And probably all the people who are just chilling, reading the books. and I know, mean, I don't know if they'd leave. be the ones who stole it. They might be victims of something. True. Who benefits from keeping everybody here? Do you have any enemies, Woodfellow? Oh, no. I have no enemies. So, who would wish to do me harm? I am but a human. Custodian of the library. I don't think he's the target. Who, uh, I think, first of all, I want to know who was regularly traveling and when the crystals were absconded hmm. and who hmm. benefits from that. I... I haven't had a traveler visit me in quite some time. Did they used to travel a lot? Hmm. No, but rarely. What kind of travelers? Where would they be from? Oh, well... From time to time, um... Oh, gosh. From time to time, my friend Johan would visit. Johan? Johan. Oh. Sounds like somebody who enjoys music. Oh my god, he's been talking like Johan. this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I made Johan. that joke. Guys, we know Johan. We've met him, right? Ha have we? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Let me look. Johan. You thought we met him, I think. Is that right? Uh... Or we heard about a Johan? I'm looking through my notes to see if Johan was. The men we met outside the tavern. Oh, the guy that, like was bullshitting us yeah maybe every um unimportant npc is named johan in this universe <laughs> they're all named johan <laughs> nobody heard of a johan before most I'm dastardly just... dm trick 
So okay, here. How about how about this? This is a different question. When were they stolen? Ooh, some time past. Like, would you say like twenty years ago? Are you able to keep track of time? No one seems to be able to do that here. I uh, understand the progression of time, but I do not track it. No. Okay, that's helpful. Excellent. We should definitely figure out who stole these crystals because that could be our ticket out of here. Seems you like said you know, my friend, Johan. I he has not visited in some time. Of course, because your teleportation circle's broken. Ah, okay. My circle is non-functional at present. Guys, I turn around a bit. I forgot how hard it is to speak to tree people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting visibly flustered and impatient. My foot's like tapping and I'm like, magic they, crystals, they, teleportation, They did kind of ruin that last camping trip we had. Demi plane in the middle of the Feywild. I'm going to write my paper on this and it's going to launch my career. I am glad to have been such a valuable resource for your research, little Abigail. Uh, um, hey, if you I do these hope books. you like me appropriately as your source. Yes, wait, say that, repeat I that. I am very fond of proper citation format. Oh. If you I don't are... get out of here soon, I'm going to become a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you remind me of my old teacher, Professor Whistlebeard, and um, he's a teacher that I has been a teacher for a long time. She is the only one who passed this class with a decent grade. Oh my god, this is the talk of academics. I need to get out of here. Whistlebeard <laughs> talks a lot about citations, and I don't care to relive it. I know, I know. Okay. Well, hey, you, I mean, I was about to say if we could find you here later, but I guess you're not really going anywhere, are you? <laughs> oh, I will be here. Please come back with my crystals if you wish to operate the circle, or if you have questions and seek knowledge, I do like to share what I know. Holy uh, what, smokes. Uh, one more question. <laughs> uh, what is your opinion on Brambleflies? flies? Ah, a dangerous pest. What's your opinion on fairy dragons? Oh. <laughs> Even more dangerous and more unpredictable. Not if a fan. You speak of Lady Silvaria, I advise you not to disturb her slumber. How long does she stay sleeping tells me for? Not to Some time. Some time? She's been asleep for a while? Has she been asleep since before or after the crystals got stolen? Yes. That, that was not a yes question. That was a one or the <laughs> other question. <laughs> I, um, I think um, half mm, no oh, dear. before she went to sleep before the crystals got stolen uh, yes okay I'm gonna write that down hey tree guy I only got one question for you ah uh, I have answer. All right, here we go. Um, you know how to grow scrolls? I see you could grow books. You know how to grow scrolls? Mm, I have grown scrolls in the past, yes. Tricky to do, like leaves, crumbles. Mm, books are better. 
books are better. Uh, uh, how about spell books? You know how to grow spell books? Yeah. Mm. A book of spells. Mm. I can grow the book, mm, but I do not grow the spells. Well, that's disappointing. All right. Are there any spell books in the library? Yeah, good question. I like the way you think. Thank you. Hmm, yes, I will. Have one collected for you when next you arrive to visit me. Oh, we're gonna come back real soon, I can promise you that. Now when you say you, are you talking about me? Fine. Do you know how to read spell books? Yeah. That's how I learn my stuff. Oh. Are you a wizard? Absolutely not, no. Oh. Huh. Okay. I'm like one of those guitars that can't read notation, but I can read tabs. Oh. <laughs> wow, that hit someplace <laughs> real relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Might I give you a piece of advice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are so preoccupied with time, perhaps you should go speak with Mistress Sadia. She seems to always arrive on time. Yeah. Uh, oh, what crap. direction is that at? Or who is, is she? Oh, um, she has an office to the mm, that way, and he points north. Okay, we'll definitely go see her. Oh, you know what? I just realized this whole time I failed to fail to show you nice little <gasps> wood fellow. Here. Oh, I would have been so much nicer if I saw the houses. He's like, he's a little cutie. Oh my gosh. The token on the map looks menacing. This one looks... Yeah. 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 Fluffy looks like a Pokemon. is, like, <laughs> is already, like, making a little nest. The houses are for little, the little sprites that help in the library. Oh, can Fluffy make friends with the sprites? Fluffy, Fluffy can try. Somebody. Do, do, um, do the sprites like little teacup owls hmm. the sprites really might actually i think quite get along with with fluffy but perhaps that's a friendship to be forged another day um woodfellow Wo woodfellow turns to uh, some of the sprites and goblins and starts gesturing slowly and um sort of says to to one of them hmm, yes, little one the green one on that shelf and he's sort of pointing and the the little library minions go scurrying off to pull books off of shelves and stack books onto shelves and it does seem as if you haven't been watching them for all that long but it seems as if they're just kind of reorganizing the whole library like, like for no reason. Like they're they're alphabetizing and then reverse alphabetizing and then chronologically and then or is did that something happen and they're like we're debating it. between the Dewey Decimal System or alphabetical by author and then by dates. Yeah. Then, you know. Hey, uh, guys, there's uh, something that I don't think we've considered, and I, I was wondering if I could take you all aside to uh, talk about it. The tree. Just reminded me of something uh, pretty important. All right, we step aside where there's no sprites or people to listen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah what well, well, the the thing that I don't think any of us have really uh, been considering is uh, time, right? So, uh, some places in the Feywild, you spend the day in the Feywild. Uh, it turns out to be 20 years. That's a goof. It's hilarious. Um, so we might want to, uh, 
figure this fast. thing out faster, uh, <laughs> sooner rather than later. Oh my goodness, you're right. Okay. Hey, we might have missed midterms already. That's, That's awesome. exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> no. There is a workshop I wanted to go to with a very renowned um, expert on... Um, it's You know what? He'd be very useful right now. He'd probably make and, his own crystals. And there's, there's a guy at the tavern that I go to that I owe a proper beat. If I came back and he was dead, and he's been dead for 50 years, I'd be pretty bummed out. Oh, did you promise to be the one to kill him? Just like Oh I no, no, not to, to kill him, nothing kill like that. Just to beat him. Just to smash his face in a little bit. So uh we should probably start looking for globes or whatever. Well, I think we should meet um meet up with uh um, the timely the Sadia. one that's always on time. Yeah. Sadia, that one. Yeah. Because obviously these crystals were stolen. We need to figure out who would be the thief. But we should be very careful. Who? Let's not just mention the crystals right away to anybody, because they might hey. get dangerous if they know that we know. Abigail, I am a master of being subtle. Uh, <laughs> maybe for a hobgoblin, but you're talking to a deep gnome, so I have no much camouflage and fade away. I. <sighs> You know, some words are just so subjective. <laughs> Maze kind of wanders back past the guy reading the book, and he just wants to see if he can, like, taste the charm on the air, if he can sense that the book is forcing people to sit there, or if they're hmm. actually there by will. Uh, you can maybe... I'd say you can roll an arcana check. It's not maybe your strong suit, but um, you can give it a you can give it a spin. Definitely not my strong suit, but I am always. We believe in you. Nobody will know, except Andrew. You do feel as if there's some sort of um, charismatic pull that's happening here, but it's not necessarily. You don't get the sense that there's a, a spell work enchantment here. It, it does seem to be a little bit more subtle than that. Um, but you also notice that, you know, everyone just is sort of in rapt attention. There have been some changes, if you were paying attention before. Some uh, individuals here have left and others have taken their place. Um, so it doesn't seem to be exactly the same crowd um, that's listening to the recitation. Okay. Although some people are still in, in, in common. Book. Anyways. Yeah, we definitely will probably leave with that. Um, wait, what's over here? Oh, this is where you check out? Yes, so in this little nook is a workroom. The Northwest Alcove serves as a sort of work area where dozens of sprites work around tiny writing desks along with a team of goblins that seem to be running bookbinding presses. Uh, they seem hard at work to create beautifully crafted and, and illuminated manuscripts. A wide central table serves as a communal work surface, and flat pieces of leather are spread out next to nearly complete manuscripts, and tiny pots containing wheat paste and brushes. Um, there are brass hand tools that sit next to a small brazier for decorating the books. Um, the denizens that are working here chatter back and forth with each other happily in a in a strange tongue, which you recognize as silk. Does anyone think it's weird that there's like a whole manuscript enterprise happening inside of the Raven Tree Estate? Mm -hmm. I think everything about everything that's happening is weird. Um, Vlad, you would notice a, a residual aura of transmutation magic in this work workroom. Uh, many of the tools are enchanted with that, although it doesn't seem clear exactly why or for what purpose. Hey, how come your stuff's got transmutation over all over it? <laughs> uh, a few subtle 
from their work and kind of uh, shake their heads or, or chastise you for interrupting and then and then go back to their work. I would like to intimidate. <laughs> okay. All right. You may roll an intimidation check. Are you trying to get us into a fight? No, I just don't like being ignored. It's rude. <laughs> <sighs> I asked them a question. If they act like they didn't hear me, I don't like it. Oh, oh that uh, uh, <laughs> one, one of the goblin uh, <laughs> servants uh, leaps to attention and says, "Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I sir. just, I just like to clarify. My all he did for his intimidation is he went, uh, 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 and then he put his axe on the table. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Oh uh, yeah, that was, I'm so so grateful for you to ask. Uh, I can't help but notice that a lot of your stuff is enchanted with the transmutation. I was wondering what for. What do you use it for? Oh, we are making books. So what the magic the makes the books faster, better. With oh more yes, gold faster leaf? and better and more reedy. What kind of what? What's the subject matter? What books? Are, what is make this? A book more reedy. Oh, whatever, whatever we're told. What are you usually told to make? Who, who's asking for books? Oh, I do the binding. It's the sprites over there. They're doing the illumination. Also, you can read in the dark. That's that's wiki. I'm gonna look at one of the covers. I want to see like what the subject matter of these books are. I'm so glad you asked. That sounded sarcastic. No, no, no. <laughs> Remember something about like a giant list of books? Yeah, we're um, the, this book is titled uh, The Brownie and the Rats and Other Fables by Graystrom Arliz. Oh, wait. Are these like kind of like what we're hearing in the other room? Those types of books? Do you take a moment to peruse the front page of if they allow me to pick it up and look no, for it. I think they, they will. The, the sprites are hard at work <laughs> illustrating the, the sort of marginalia, you know, the, the sort of little sketches Before in the Before I open it, I look at Vlad. If I open this book, am I going to get mind controlled? I don't know, but if you get mind control, I promise I will the knock you out. The book itself is not magical. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna you have my word, I will knock you clean out. Oh, gee, thanks. That is so happy to hear it. Um, I'm going to read this. <laughs> um, it appears to be a uh, collection of fables uh, written over the course of many years. Uh, each one seems to be building up as if it's about to deliver some sort of moral lesson, but each story is consistently cut short by the appearance of an erudite swordsman. An erudite swordsman? I'm an erudite swordsman, I think. You're an erudite swordsman? I don't know what that first word means. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can go ask Woodfellow. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna write this down. Um... I need a calendar, a word, day, or a, cal oh, no, a, word a day calendar at this point. Written by... Right. Just put it in the chat log for you. <laughs> Flat mistake here, type for erotic. <laughs> it's so weird because there's a regular <laughs> in my Twitch chat whose name is Eurydite something something, and I've never heard of that word before in my life, but I read it whenever I greet him, and so you saying this is trippy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems to be what they're working on at the moment. We, when you find out what erudite means, it's even funny. Vlad <laughs> doesn't know what it is. Scarlet doesn't know what it means. Uh, it means had to Google having, it. having or showing great knowledge or learning. Wait, what is it? Having or showing great knowledge or learning. Oh, I feel like Abigail not only knows that word, but has described herself mm. as a Eurydite known yeah, probably in has. conversations. Um, huh, what a weird little fable. Um, hey guys, can I keep this? We're not done yet. Oh, do you have one that's finished? 
All right. Um, and they go rummaging through um, a, a basket of books uh, next to their table, and they produce a tome for you. Oh, I'm stuffing that in my book bag. Yes! Spooky Faybook to the collection. Hmm. Are you rolling to see which book on the long list of books it is? Yes. Uh, they, Hell yeah. They provide you with a, a book entitled uh, Perilous Footpaths of the Harbor, True and Honest Accounts by Bradley Wood. Gripping stuff. This sounds Oh my god, are these all books made by trees? Like books that were written by tree people? <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. I don't know, but I'm gonna read this when I go to bed, okay? Uh huh. If you wake up weird, just let me know. Uh, I'm definitely not letting you know. <laughs> Bring that back when you're done with it. Uh, yes, I will. Do you have. Can I have a library card? We don't do cards. <clears throat> I oh, will here's... draw my own library card. <laughs> a reminder. Put it in the leaf. You draw your own library card, and the, the goblin seems satisfied. Oh, I could conjure one. Boop! <laughs> yes. Very good. Okay. All right, guys. Where, where are we going? Maze leaves three berries as uh, a deposit. Alphonse is just, like, leaning in the doorway, like, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was fun. I want to go to the party room, because they told me not to. <laughs> First thing I noticed in this hallway are the giant guards on the other side. <laughs> Looking at me like the shining. What are they? Uh, oh. Those look like Friends. demons. Yes, so there are portrait frames hanging on the walls. Um, most of them are badly weathered and, and worn. Uh, some of them no longer even bear visible depictions of whatever person was illustrated there. Although uh, some of them do remain sort of stuffy looking ancestors of the house, um, seemingly from perhaps before. These aren't new portraits. It seems that they've been hanging here and neglected for quite some time. Many of them are water damaged or stained in other ways. Any that look like Darius? Mm, no. Any that look like Alphonse? <laughs> mm. Does he bear resemblance? Any that Anybody look like else tenuous. Tenuous. Anybody tenuous. else have those eyes? Tenuous resemblance. No one with no one with those eyes though. Okay. Maybe you're adapted. Well, so um, Woodfellow directed you towards the office to up here if you wish to meet with. Sadia. Otherwise, there's many other places you could go. Okay, we gotta make a plan. Yeah. Are we gonna stay on track, or are we gonna just go room by room patiently? Tell me about the guards. <laughs> like, what are those guards? Uh, at the far end of the hallway, there are a pair of very intimidating-looking uh, burly hobgoblin house guards that hobgoblin in heavy guards. armor Rose! that be blocking access to uh, doors behind them. Well, as much as I would love to go and check that out, uh, whenever Audio Slave is invoked, I gotta, I gotta go with, uh, I gotta go with that. So let's go ahead <laughs> yeah. and, and meet the uh, meet the lady that they told let's us. Let's go about. into Sadie's office like a stone. Yeah. Can we have a um, water pee? Yes, I was just gonna say we've gone a little bit further than our normal halfway point. So this is a great point to take a break, and we will resume as the party is about to stride into whatever awaits them beyond this door. As soon as we come back from a five minute break so please don't go anywhere we will be back you will be back something's gonna happen when they meet with uh whatever is beyond this door so don't go anywhere and we will be back in just a moment And welcome back. Thank you for bearing with us on our break. Uh, I'm excited to get back into this episode three as the party is about to enter a new chamber of 
the Feyward estate and perhaps meet someone that um, Usk had recommended that they speak to um, before their rest. So I'll turn it back over to all of you. The door stands before you. Um, you're free to enter when you wish. Say no more. First. <laughs> oh, Vlad goes first. <laughs> Vlad is there. You enter a small office, and it just so happens that uh, at this particular moment, Usk is in fact here. Um, but not here on his own, as um, there is another figure in this space. Um, but I'll describe the room first and let you know that um, the air is crisp and sweet in this room because there are dozens of flowers and ferns uh, filling the shelves of this space. Warm lighting spills forth from lamps overhead. There's a modest desk sitting underneath the window it appears to be in a state of controlled chaos. Um, nearby, there's seating and uh, refreshment, and um, against one wall is a full-length mirror. But there is one thing above all else that catches your eye in this particular room, and it is its primary inhabitant. Um, Usk is seated at the small table, seemingly partaking of a small goblet of wine and in conversation and interrupted briefly when you step in, um, but not um, bothered by your arrival. Um, in the middle of the room uh, by the desk, there is a very, very, almost stunningly, I would say, beautiful woman clad in a gown that seems to be made of living plant life. Her hair, if it could be called hair, or surely vines would be a more accurate description, have blooming flowers woven within it and swept over her shoulder. Ooh. Your smile graciously as you enter. And Rusk quickly stands to his feet and says, ah, you made it, very good. Um, please let me introduce you all. Um, Mistress Sadia, this is Vlad. Abigail, Alphonse, Mesriel, and of course, Dr. Charlotte, as he introduces each of you in turn with some uh, appreciation. Thadia smiles and gestures to bid you all welcome, as Usk says, um, friends, may I present to you her ladyship, Sadia, Seneschal of the Ayward Manor. How, how tall is she? She's tall. <laughs> um, she's about maybe like seven feet tall. Y'all see Vlad's demeanor just completely change. <laughs> um, she, she purses her lips and her eyes sparkle in some degree of amusement or um, perhaps pride uh, even. She says... Hello. It's not often that mortals come to visit us. She lets that linger in the air for a moment. Can I ask a real quick question? Because I think I misheard you. Did you say the Feywood estate? The Feywood estate, yes. It seems to be a colloquialism that Usk has used to um, refer to the manor. Okay. I just thought I heard, said that and that kind of like made bells go off. Anyways, Abigail is not interrupting. Abigail is listening. Uh, um, uh, Vlad, hello. I'm you, pleasure. Um, me, <laughs> uh, you're, uh, help. Someone help me. <laughs> I jam an elbow right into your thigh, like in the Charlie horse section of it. She's either she's either too um, she's too kind, perhaps, to um, to indicate anything of, about your awkwardness, and so she instead just smiles uh, pleasantly, and she says, "Allow me to formally formally welcome you to the Raven Tree Estate. I am Sadia Seneschal, and." confidant of the Lady Elsia. 
As I understand it from Usk here, you are hoping to provide some aid to the household in exchange for a measure of our hospitality? I, I, I'd kill for you. Huh, well, um, that might oh, be fun. Uh, don't make a promise. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say that that's very kind of you. Most who come here are more interested in availing of our hospitality without offering much in return. So your gesture is appreciated, Brad. I, I, you say my name real nice. Somebody do the discussing. What do we need? Globes. We gotta find circles, crystals. <laughs> we have been told that Elsith needs help. Hmm. Well, perhaps someone's been speaking a bit loosely about manor affairs, and she looks over to Usk. It's not clear if it's disapproving or teasing, but um, there was a little bit of guiding through her voice there. Um, she says, I could perhaps introduce you to Lady Elsieth, but... First, I need to make sure that you are trustworthy and responsible. I would never lie to you. I have a few tasks which would benefit from a deft and uninvolved hand. Hmm. Yes. There are a few matters that I could use assistance with. Hmm. Ones where I do not need to be personally involved. There is much happening here. Yeah, well, we could we could do it, right, gang? I give the shifty eyes. Sure. Yes, I'd be happy to have an outside force nudge things a little bit and see what uh, comes loose. Oh yeah, kick the ant hill, see what scurries around. I like that. I hope that um, this needs not to be said, but I do not generally endorse the violence as an acceptable way to nudge things. I any act hate that, violence. Any <laughs> act that results in chaos, destruction, or death in this estate will be taken as a personal slight against me. And I do not take insults lightly. Her tone indicates considerable seriousness. Find diplomatic answers, if you can. We're, we're all about diplomacy. Maze is going to druid craft a light blue and yellow lily and try to, like, palm it to Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. Um, what are the spell components of druid craft? Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm just checking here. Verbal and somatic. Okay, she very obviously sees you doing this. <laughs> yeah, Maze has never been sneaky in his life. He was watching you with interest. I'm going to take the lily and go, uh, we, we, we are more than happy to help you uh, with death, uninvolved hands, and no violence. Um, you, you just tell us what to do. And then he makes his axe and his great sword vanish. <laughs> are you offering her? Are you offering her the lily? Yes. She takes the lily from you with a smile and she tucks it into her kind of growing regalia. And with a little gesture of her hands, it sort of takes root. It's no longer like a, a severed stalk of flower, but some more, some additional leaves bloom out of it and it kind of integrates it itself into her overall attire. Fancy. Thank you. Now, no problem. to the tasks at hand. Um, I would offer you a choice of topics, perhaps. There are many things that require a degree of intervention. It is it stretches even the extent of my considerable abilities to keep things from evolving further into chaos. Two of our guests, some old friends of mine are, in fact, both overdue for a visit. Um, 
They're overdue because they happen to be busy shouting at each other from opposite sides of the pond in the maze. I don't have the time, frankly, or the patience to go figure out what set them off this time. I'd been hoping that they would have dropped it by now and come inside, but it's been some time and they still haven't shown up. What are their names? Huh. My friends are Ernina and Stakina. Ervina and Ernina. Stakina. And they're arguing? With some ferocity, last I heard. Thistle and Thorn reported a great commotion in the maze and told me to look into it, but when I found that it was my friends in another of their famous spats, I simply didn't have the patience to help them work through it. Perhaps you can get them unstuck. That sounds simple enough. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm great at conflict resolution and cooking. And cooking. Are you also good at dishes and child rearing? I, I will rear the hell out of the child. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. <laughs> He also that's... loves to give flowers, as you've noticed. My biggest weakness is that I give so much. Perhaps if um, wrangling children is your talent, then another task that might appeal to you is that... Uh-oh. Well, we are very accommodating to those who wish to visit, and we're always welcome of guests who are well-behaved. But... Um, a rather large group of visiting satyrs have overtaken our audience chamber, and it is now unused for some time since Lady Elsie has been otherwise occupied. They have, to be frank, overstayed their welcome. Oof. Some of their group ran afoul of the revel in the dining hall, and the rest fell prey to their own vices. We tried expelling them, but they're sim they've simply refused to leave. If you could do something to get them to move on, I would be delighted. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm great at getting expelled. Perfect. Well, there is one other matter, if you would be so kind. Although, you're free to assist in whichever order most interests you. I'll do anything um, you want me to. We are... We have a, a house pet of sorts, an outdoor pet, specifically, who has managed to wander inside since its keeper disappeared some time ago. I would very much appreciate someone escorting the thing outside. What is the pet? Ah, it is, of course. Um, we keep a shambling mound to dispose ah! of our waste. It's become something of a mascot Man. around here, a pet in the resident's eyes. We all enjoy its company for what it is, but, um, well, for a long time, our former groundskeeper, Timnus, kept it wrangled and out of our hair. But unfortunately, after his disappearance, Shambly has just sort of wandered around wherever it likes. It's roamed the first floor for a while. It'll eat anything, you see, even, even staff, if it can, or guests. She frowns slightly, picturing that. Oh, it'll eat anything, huh? Yeah, I'll get that thing right out of here. Power. We need it, of course. It is a favored pet, but inside the house, it's a hazard to everyone. We were fortunate in that a few days ago, someone saw it wander into the baths, and she gestures back over her shoulder. We closed right. the door before it could get out, still. It needs to be outside and not in. Okay, don't kill it, Vlad. I, I would never- I don't do violence! Why would you tell me that? Oh, sorry. That's right. No violence. Never. I never once did a violence. Not never. Alright, uh... Yeah, it will, we'll take care of the satyrs and, and the arguing people by the pond, and then I'll get your pet right outside. Uh, happy as a clam. Uh, anything, anything for you. All right. Uh, that, that's a good starting point, right? If you have more stuff for us, we can like, come back just so we don't get overloaded with chores. If you manage these tasks, I would be 
most appreciative, and I would consider um, assisting you with your own affairs. It's been a while since someone visited the manor who was capable and reasonable to work with. But it's not the first time I see. Yeah, you did kind of say that it was like uh, oh, it's been a while since mortals have shown up. Have many immortals shown up recently or ever? It's um, a delicate matter that there is a situation unfolding within the manner that I may need your or some assistant with, but that is a complicated situation that I'm not ready to discuss yet. Makes sense. Say no more. Are we bothering you with these questions? You want us to get out of your hair? I'm so sorry if we messed up your day. We'll go take care of these problems right away. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna start right away. I don't. He just walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait. Are we doing the the pet first, or we gotta? He's like go? a man of action. I He's see. Gone. Okay. I found something. <laughs> Uh, what seems like the easiest thing to do? Well, I feel like... Probably the, resolving whatever conflict, I think. The, uh, the only downside I see to that is it's in the middle of a maze, and I'm only good at, like, one of those. Hmm. I mean, I'm down to take it. At it wish, uh, she, says, she calls after you and says, if you wish to have access to the baths, I can let you through the gallery as long as you promise not to disturb anything. Disturb anything? Sure. I promise to try. Yeah. You see her footsteps running back and then kiss the door cracked open. I promise! <laughs> Remember, um, if you're going after Shambly, um, you need to get it outside. You might be able to coax it or drive it or otherwise herd it out. Um, I'm not sure what it most responds to. That was Timnus's business. And he's been Ideally, you time. should get it out of here without it eating any of you first. Shambly's not particularly intelligent. Okay. All right, guys, I have a plan. But we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll, we'll, let's walk and talk. She walks over towards the large double doors to the north, and um, with a flourish, she pulls a key out of... Uh, it's almost like you didn't think she had pockets, but she sort of reaches into her dress and pulls out a key. It's and, got pockets? Yeah, if she wants it to. And she unlocks the, the door and says, be careful in the gallery. Don't disturb anything. The baths are just beyond. Okay. Come back to me if you have any progress to report or further questions. I'll be here discussing with Usk for a while. Okay. Um, which direction are we going? We're going through the double doors, or yeah, where are we? Where's the yeah? Because the, the doors, doors she unlocked were to the north uh, on the north side of her office. Otherwise, there are other routes you can take. Certainly. Oh, let's just take might them. as well take them. Sort of. Yeah. I'd imagine somebody called the lad back as he's like <laughs> just pacing outside the door. What well, can recognize what the concepts are for this? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think that's a good moment to to display that is this is a fairly interesting room even though you're not maybe just passing through i do want to let you know what you've encountered here along the way um the whole of this space is bathed with warm light There are gauzy curtains that readily let light through while keeping prying eyes away from seeing more than should be allowed. Numerous cases are collected along the walls and lining the carpet. Each are filled with a manner of weird and wonderful items. The most striking feature of the room, however, is the towering mirror, a 
along the southeast wall, flanked by a pair of beautiful dryad statues. It appears to be reflecting the room, but perhaps at night? And it's so convincing that the mirror seems to drink up the light around it. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and cast another uh Are we are we in the mirror? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cast another detect magic. The mirror is reflecting the room, but a nighttime version, you said. It, that's what it seems to, yes. Does the nighttime version look exactly like this room or does it look kind of dusty and broken and cobwebby at the barest glance that the image of itself appears to depict the same room that you're in but drenched in darkness and gloom the reflected space in the mirror is clean orderly the cases are laden with strange objects it seems so real that it almost seems to cast a faint blue light into the room itself as you approach the mirror um, you notice a few things. Um, firstly, you do not see yourself. Secondly, the room reflected in the mirror appears to be much cleaner and well-maintained than this one. None of the wear and tear is visible. There's also not a single bit of overgrowth and there's no light coming in through the windows. Does I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna detect, touch the mirror. Yeah. Does, I was gonna say, does the tech magic uh ping? Uh absolutely. The mirror is positively suffuse with magical energy, conjuration specifically. Uh before before anybody gets the bright idea to just go touching that thing, just want you to know it's uh it is full blown magic and uh it's also uh conjuration so take that for what it's worth if you die you die is it um, a portal i touch it touching the mirror uh, nothing seems to happen although it feels an unpleasant cold and it gives you a sensation of uneasiness That's for a moment the light dims slightly on the far side of the mirror and you see distantly a blurry, partially obscured figure moving through the room and then out of view. Ooh. I step back. I am not getting pulled into that thing. Does anything like else distance. in the room glow? What's the question? Uh, does anything else in the room glow? Ah, good question. Um, several of the cases themselves mm -hmm. glow with spellcraft, yep. not the contents, the cases. Gotcha. Um, checking a few things. Tree Mommy don't want us to touch at things. I see it. Um, <laughs> Yes, there are, um, one case glows with some magic items. It appears to contain what appears to be a, a club of some kind, as well as a, a pair of shields. Oh, no. I like um, the items appear to be brand new, aside from the fact that there is a horrible amount of gore splattered on them. It oh. looks like fresh blood. I like that even more. Um, there is also, um, one case that glows with magic that seems to contain a, um, single inconspicuous broom. <gasps> he, said in, he said inconspicuous. He said it's, it's nothing. It's, it's not. Asio broom! Nothing happened. You guys just see uh, Vlad's <sighs> eyes glowing blue and he's looking around at all the stuff. Then he stops at the broom and he's just like, oh yeah, don't touch the love of your life is in the other room. You'll be very disappointed. All right, we've got to go. My the breath is fogging. Is I know. I want, I've, I've always wanted my own broom. I've 
always wanted one. Maze just casually closes the doors behind us so that the other room can't see what we're doing. <laughs> is anyone um, who's inspecting the mirror, is anyone inspecting the mirror closely? I or stepped the, away the, from yeah, that I would, closely, I would I, say... Oh, I, haven't not, I haven't stopped looking at it. I, I don't care about the broom. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, I sort of mutter, I feel like this is the third place. Are you inspecting it uh, actively or just kind of taking it in? Uh, I don't know what the difference. Is. I guess what I mean is, are you are you like trying to, to look for something in particular or look for things that stand out to you or are you just kind of surveying the scene? Yeah, just looking at the differences mainly, I think. Okay, you may roll a blind perception check, please. And the, I'll, I'll switch back to the concept art if and when necessary, but I'm going to pull you back here to the map to help you orient yourselves a little bit. Um, the broom is, of course, in this case here. Uh, the gore-covered implements, uh, Vlad, are over here. Um, other items in the room seem interesting, but nothing particularly magical. I need to get out of this room. <laughs> you just see him walking towards the door. Um, Alphonse, you're fascinated by the mirror, so much so that yeah. your concentration wanes and you find yourself just thinking about this space beyond, but not actually taking anything in. Yeah. It's I'm, mesmerizing in a way. I'm just thinking about the violet portal or the. That was the color. That's where this leads. Alphonse, maybe you shouldn't stand so close to it. I swear, if you ruin my chances, uh, I will destroy you. <laughs> I, it just gives me a really bad feeling. Do I even hear that? Maze, what's your... Oh, your perception's pretty good. I what are you know. doing, Maze? Do you hear that? <laughs> I'm kind of keeping an eye on everybody in this room. Uh, part of my brain is debating on whether I can steal the broom, but I'm mostly just mm. making sure I have eyes on everybody and glancing through what they're looking at, too. Kind of mostly on Overwatch, I guess you could say. Okay, fair enough. Well, the frogs are really interesting. Mm, yeah, I can tell you about those. Um, Please. There's a, uh, there are a, a case containing three lovely crystal frogs that appear to have been chiseled or carved from larger chunks of colorful crystal, and they're sitting on jade lily pads. Their detail is exquisite. That's, that's awesome. It's All right, easy so to lose track of time in this gallery. It's so silent and quiet and timeless, and the light filtering in through the windows, it's sort of mesmerizing. You you find yourself feeling this sort of sleepy, just haze being here. Oh. I am uncomfortable, because that mirror makes me uncomfortable. Can we open the door? Yeah, I think, I think Vlad and Abigail might be stepping into the next room. And then pull myself away. You open the door, um, and you take in a lush and verdant sight beyond. The room is packed with strange flowers, ferns, and creeping vines, which have crawled up the walls and now dangle from the ceiling like streamers. More than that, it's uncharacteristically warm and humid in here, more so than anywhere else in the manor. A broad pool of water reflects light from numerous wall-length windows covered by gauzy curtains, only good at keeping prying eyes at bay. A two-tiered waterfall fountain spills water into the basin, filling the room with an enjoyable sound of flowing water. Well, oh, is this the bath? <gasps> There's a shambling mound around here somewhere. Does anything in here glow? 
Mm. There is a substantial amount of transmutation, evocation, and conjuration magic at work here. You presume it may be related to controlling the room's temperature, producing water, and perhaps even keeping the plants happy. The source of the magic seems to come from the structure of the, the space and the fountain itself, as though the magic were laid into the stonework. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna... Can I do a perception check to see if I see a, anything moving you like a chamber now? May, yes, definitely. Okie okay, dokie. I forgot. I'm really trash at this. Let's go! But anything for her. Oh, 17. <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah. The, um, let's see. Yeah, there's there's two things that you that you spot definitely. So first, about the room, um, mm -hmm. the water flowing from the fountain is very obviously warm, and you see a little bit of steam. It's almost hot, like a, a sauna. Um, it's a big contributor to the temperature and humidity in the room. The other thing that you perceive is um, very obviously to you lurking within the foliage on the far side of the room is a large hulking shape that seems to have intentionally and craftily concealed itself by draping some plant life over its body. All right, and last question for you. Uh, are these curtains uh, windows? There are windows, yes. All right. Behind each set of curtains, yes. It's a little if, difficult to see out because there's just sort of fog and steam co completely covering them. I'm going to try to open one of the windows. You, you, you are, yep. You, you and me say Patrick. Yep. <laughs> okay. This thing is about to get yoted. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to try to open this window right here. Okay, sure. Um I don't think you even necessarily need to roll for that. Um you're able to pull up the, the window, it's fairly significant, uh, especially for uh, someone of your stature, but it is, um, it does let in a comparatively cooler breeze. It's not cold outside, it's also kind of pleasantly warm, but um, it does start to, to let a draft into the room. Okay. I'm gonna take Fluffy off my hat, go look at him. All right, little guy. I have a big job for you. I'm going to need you to look as delicious as possible. And flap your little butt over there and get its attention and lead him outside. And if I you die, I'll bring you back. I would like to take the help action, please. <laughs> okay. I love it. So, uh, here's your little owl. Uh, and... You're, you can position it wherever you like, Scarlet. Well, where is um, it? Oh, I need to give you ownership here. There you go. And where is the um, Shambling Mound? Well, uh, let's check your perception here. Um, is Vlad uh, I would point it out for sure. Yeah, Vlad points out, and there's just a kind of hulking shape that has seemingly just sort of covered itself in ferns and flowers. Okay. Fluffy. Go stand. It, like, flaps right... Okay. Here. Um, I'm gonna, here. I'm gonna pause here for a moment. Um, Vlad, you're taking yes. the help action. Describe to mm -hmm. me what assistance you are providing. Uh, so I am going to uh it's it's that same thing I did the first time I saw Abigail is uh kind of giving a blessing of the Feywild. Um so the second I see Abigail start to talk to uh her owl, uh I'm just going to give her a pat on the back and there's going to be some of the essence from my home uh that en envelops uh envelops her and the owl. Um and uh, uh, we both are going to gain seven temporary hit points. Essentially, I'm just kind of 
Uh, I'm giving uh, the owl one of those fly fast, you fool. <laughs> Not like, like fly, you fool type, type deal. Oh, can my owl get those temporary hit points? Oh, uh, absolutely. Them? Absolutely. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty clutch. Go ahead. So you rolled a uh, seven. Mm -hmm. So that brings the owl up to eight. Eight. Hit points. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Yeah. So eight HP. does this mean like, what? my next roll, I have advantage or... Uh, on the bird's next roll, it has advantage. On the bird's next roll. Well, mm -hmm. it's probably good that you did that, because as soon as Fluffy gets close to this pile of shambling organic matter, it suddenly, almost alarmingly, moves into action. The massive leaf pile shakes and quivers as if from a strong gust of unseen wind an arm of plant life emerges dirt shaking off of it capped with dangerous looking talons the rest of the body follows until the floral abomination of the plant is fully upright and ready to put you in the ground instead um let me do a couple of things here okay and just to reiterate the plan is for fluffy to like make it chase it out the window i should probably not be standing next to the window okay. <laughs> yeah i, I want to be standing next to the window because even if it just moves here i will try and athletics grab this thing and yoke it out the window oh my god <laughs> that's unpleasant that is unpleasant well, Wait, oh, no. oh the token changed Oh, um, this cat? sucks. There we go. Really big. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I just it left like a residual one behind. There we go. Yeah, so it, it comes out. In fact, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show this to you. Um, here is the, the lovely uh, Shambly, uh, old Shambly that um, you are facing. Bet you he ate Tim 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 Tim, Tim Man. Tim 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 the 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 gardener. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did he eat the gardener? Or yeah, I mean that's a good that's a good. Or question. is he the gardener? Uh, you know what? I'm getting ready to throw this thing out the window, and it's still not the worst thing I've ever done for a crush. I am absolutely <laughs> going to need you all to roll initiative, please. Okay. To be clear, I can I can like take myself away from the mirror right now. Or am I you may, yes. You're, you are you were temporarily transfixed, but uh, upon hearing the sounds of activity from the room beyond, you are certainly able to act. Does my owl um, have its own initiative? Or... I think it will, yes. I think in this case, I'll have you roll for uh, Fluffy as well. Come on, Fluffy. Fluffy coming in clutch! <laughs> on top of it. Fluffy's little eyes got even bigger, and now it's just a circle with two big eyes and little wings going. It's like a flying chicken nugget. <laughs> and all over for Charlotte, although I'm probably not going to do too much. Oh, natural one. That's because she's not here. Um, all right, Fluffy, you. Oh my. Abigail, uh, you are able to seize the initiative by proxy of Fluffy. You certainly have this creature's attention. You almost get the sense as if it is unreasonably interested in your bird. Oh, I guess that was the plan, but it kind of sucks. Uh, Fluffy gets to go first, right? Yes. Yeah, Fluffy is first. Fluffy, and you say has full attention. This thing is not paying any attention to anything else but Fluffy. Seems that way. Okay, Fluffy's gonna use their full movement, which is 60 feet. So, uh, one, two, uh, I, I'm struggling to move it. Uh, it goes out the window. We'll just say that. It goes right out the window. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna do that. Uh, and it's gonna fly to the top of to the it's gonna fly to the top of that statue so it has a little bit of range so it can't it's like up in the air sure i don't like the way you said that 
Surprise! Right, well, it. Falls, it has to fly speed! That brings us to Alphon. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> I'm going to approach the door because I don't even know what's going on. Um... Do I see where Fluffy flew out of? Um, maybe just, you know, you were right I'm after him. I'm standing initiative. next to the door. I would say, like, this. right as you're coming to the door, you see the, the tail feathers of the owl shooting out the open window behind Abigail. Well, yeah, I'm going to right. let you know, though, Abigail, that, um, and I should probably have mentioned this on your turn, so I may let you do something slightly oh. different if you wish. Um, now that you see the enormous bulk of old Chambly, you begin to question whether it can physically get out of this window or not. Do I question it, or is it a hard no? Questionable. Um, so we either take him all the it way It may need some significant encouragement. Okay, I don't see any other way for uh, him to go. Like, I'm looking back at the path, uh, and I don't think he's been through that hall. So, yeah, we're gonna go out the window. We are going to help him. So, Fluffy then is gonna be right in the window. Actually, okay, so I have a perfect idea. Fluffy is going to stand right at the window so that he sees it, and is gonna hold its action for one, if the Shambler comes close enough, right before it's close enough to hit, it will take the dash action to move th further away to safety. Okay. Well, which window? The the big one or the one that's open? Yeah, I feel well, like we should do the big one, the one that's right next to. Oh, there's a big window? Yeah, right, right there's there. A, a triple wide window behind the fountain on the north end of the room. Okay. How do I deselect Fluffy? Because now I can't see Abigail. You can hit tab and it will alternate back and forth between the two, or Got you it. can just sort of drag a select box anywhere else. Got it. Cool. Okay. I didn't see that big window. Ooh, I have, okay. Fluffy is then going to fly to the big window. And we're going to try it. Yes. And be like. Yeah, I think you definitely, with 60 feet of fly speed, you definitely have enough yeah, to get so, kind of and on I know the far side of the window and sort of taunt curtain there but i think uh, on my turn i'm gonna like mage hand open the curtain okay awesome well it is now alphonse's turn okay. <laughs> alphonse you sort of take in what's going on here right i want them to pay attention to the board and not us so move right here and a simply mutter Canibra. I love that. And song. I put darkness all around. Oh it. my goodness. Alright, I can I can do something with this. But to only make sure that uh, you can still see the window, but just uh, avoid seeing that. Uh-huh. Can we see out of the darkness? I don't think we can, can no. we? Oh crap. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, did I just fuck you up? I have to open the window somehow, because it's... Oh, I thought you, I thought you did. No, we we opened the, out, the window next to us, but now suddenly it's um, all about this window. That's okay. I'm we'll just going to have to pull a Roman oh, Reigns. You can still see, like, you can see. <laughs> switch your perception, but yeah, you still you need to open I just need well, to be able to mage hand and open the window. Let's be real, this thing can burst through the window. <laughs> I'm pretty okay. sure. If it, if it wants to. No, meaning I need to open the curtain so that he knows oh. that the bird is on the other side. But we'll figure it out. That could still be a thing. Anything else on your turn, Alphonse? Um... No, I don't think so. Okay. Maze. Um... Well, I was debating on how to get this broom out of its little display case, but uh, now that there's like Alphonse has like blasted past me, and now there's a wall of darkness between me and everybody else. I just kind of look at the doctor. I'm like, huh? Charlotte just shrugs like, 
What do you want me to do about it? I don't know what to <laughs> do about it. <laughs> and, uh, he's gonna wander over and just check to see if this door over here leads outside or not. Okay, yeah. I, you, you can open the door with an object interaction if you wish. Yeah. You open the door and reveal a very interior room with a small bar where a, a, a goblin bartender turns towards you and looks curiously at you. Uh, my bad, dude. Uh, you might want to just take cover for a little bit. And then he closes the door again. <laughs> Can't close the door again because oh. you, you use, well, I guess you could use an action to do that. Uh, and then he's gonna, I guess, make his way over to the edge of the darkness. And, yeah, he doesn't want to walk in there. I, I'm gonna prepare a bonfire spell in case something jumps out at me. Jesus Christ. 15, 20, 25, 30. That's my full movement. Yeah. All right, Abigail. Okay. You are engulfed in swirling umbral darkness. Okay, I'm gonna put my hand on the wall and use it to scooch. I am so lagged. I'm basically trying to scooch right to the curtain Sure. And pull it open. Okay. Yeah, you managed to guide. And I'm being, way. I'm duckling. I'm trying to be really sneaky about this. I'm emerging from the darkness. I don't want him to notice me. Okay. You can. Um, do you want to? So you'd be able to pull the curtain open using an object interaction. You don't need to use your action for that. Do you want to use your action to attempt to sneak? Yeah, I have, and I'm going to use my Spurf Neblin camouflage. Ooh. I have advantage That's when I make awesome. my stealth check. It just says when you make a dexterity check, uh, stealth yeah, check, you can make it with advantage. Advantage, awesome. Yeah, go ahead and roll, uh, roll stealth for me. Um, you got it. Um, it's not the greatest, but I do have advantage. You have advantage. 15. Okay. No. You'll know on Old Shambly's turn if you are successful in evading his perception or not. Okay, but out of Fluffy's definitely like, hey, I'm over here, and I'm like, okay, Shit. all right, uh, okay, it is Shambly's turn. Wait, can I duck back into the shadows? <laughs> uh, yeah, if you have movement left, yeah, you can do that. That's yeah, I do, fair. I do. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Shambly will look around from side to side um, and I'm going to see if he notices the bird or not. Um, oh dear. The, 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 the window is pretty fogged up with steam. Oh no. Um, I did mention this. Yeah, you did. And I don't know that the flowering shambler here really even has eyes, necessarily. <laughs> he kind of senses things using other meaning. Does he sense the bird? So, clicker, it's the last of us clicker. I'm going to rule that at this point, unaware of the bird. However, your plan does have merit if maybe some additional steps can be taken. Um, yeah. You get the sense that it just doesn't realize that the bird is on the far side of the window just yet. Okay. Because the window is all steamed up and you get the sense that this creature isn't seeing with eyes so much as with some sort of preternatural sense Got it. of things that are around it. Got it. Um, so Shambly is going to do what Shambly does and shamble no. uh, for 20 feet. One, two, three. Jesus. Oh, uh, it just sort of bumps into Vlad. Um, you're a little bit alarmed to realize that this thing doesn't seem to be deterred by the darkness at all. Um, it's going to make two slam attacks against Vlad. 
fortunately, Abigail, you get the sense that it doesn't exactly know you're there. Thank God. <laughs> oh. Everything um, that has happened has just screwed me. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, uh, Vlad, uh, yeah. actually, it's going to make this attack with advantage because you can't see it. Oh. <gasps> um, I... So, it's a 25 to hit. Um, let's go ahead and give it disadvantage with, uh, Silvery Barbs. Well, I would say that if it had disadvantage, it would still be a 25, so you might okay, want to... Okay, then, then I'll save it. Just take the, take the hits. Okay. Um, it slams into you for, uh, 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Jesus. Um, it is going to make another attack, however. Uh-huh. Um, so, it would be attacking again with advantage. Uh-huh. Um, are you... Is that something... I, I think Silvery Barbs, however, requires you to see... And it's, it's, it's cool. I'll prob I think I'm about to get one shot. So that's, that's fun. Um, just, to, just to make sure that that got applied properly. Um, it was 14 points of damage, so I think you should mm -hmm. have a bit more hit points. Yeah, you, you have, like, yeah, temporary me... HP, too. Do you get your own temporary HP from, uh, Fae Gift Hospitality? Because yeah, that yep. affects you and the creature, right? Yep. Okay, so you have seven points of temp HP. That goes away, and then the leftover seven would put you at 32. So not quite as dire a situation, at least not just yet. You guys just hear Vlad go, DROP THE DARKNESS! <laughs> <laughs> well, a second uh, slam attack lashes out at you. It's a 12, though. So you're able to fend off that second attack, Ooh. crucially. Um, Shambly will shamble further down and, and get closer to the doorway. Uh, Vlad, it's your turn. Okay, uh, bonus action, we're gonna second win this. So, let's, let's see, one second. Yeah, we're gonna do the second win. Uh, so that's 1d10. Ooh, it's just that, not that, my day. That cruel minimum roll. Oh no. Alright. And then uh we're going to take a the attack action to grapple this thing. Alright. Tempted grapple, I love it. Uh so go that's ahead a athletics. And your athletics check. It will attempt to oppose your grapple. Um, with its own athletics. Alright, so Nicely that's 20. Rolled. Nicely rolled. Uh, oh, I'm afraid it meets your 20, and on a tie, the defender wins the tie. Alright, so... so for my second attack, I'm gonna do it again. Okay. <laughs> All right, it attempts to to resist being grappled, and it does not. You are Ooh. able to, using your pure physical power, grasp this creature by its tenderly arms. Action surge. Um, right. Since I have it grappled, I can move it five feet, I believe? You can. Uh, so you can move at half your speed and drag mm -hmm. it along with you. All right, so we're, I'm going to this window, which is only five feet from me. Okay. And I'm attempting to shove it out. And I've got <laughs> two more attacks to try and make this happen. Okay. You will move. I'm going to put you kind of like right here at the window. That'll drag the creature five feet closer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you action surge. So mm -hmm. do your thing, man. Uh, so it's going to be another athletics. Yeah, contested athletics. Ooh, nicely rolled. Oh, oh it ties God. you again! Silvery barbs, do it again. 
Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, you can't see it. You can't see it. You can't. Use Even if I have it in my hands. Well, I know that that seems kind of weird, but you are not able to see the target. You are able to feel the target. It's fucking. Hold on. <laughs> let me let me double let me double check silvery bars here because I just want to make sure I have to see. I am helping. <laughs> <laughs> The, the it's activation. only, it's only verbal. Oh, you can see. Never mind. God. Yeah, the, the activation condition is a creature. Oh, <laughs> killing me with this darkness. All right. Um, yeah. then, I'm gonna use my last attack. To... Look. All right. Look, Alphonse just wanted to put some challenge on <laughs> it, so that you could, so you could brag to the pretty dryad lady. Oh, All right. Girl. Good. Good, good roll. Good roll. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right, you are you succeed. All right, that's able... it. Yeet it out the window at this point. You're like okay, stuffing it's, it. It's, I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice and give you an extra an extra yeet because um, the the spacing here is a little weird. You're like shoving it through the window, and it's uh, kind of comical because the bulk of this creature is definitely too large for the window, and you get it kind of half stuck in the middle of the frame. <laughs> Dark, you know, all, all you guys see in the darkness is, ah, oh, crap, I can't see. Oh, well, ah, you, you hear from outside the room something like, what the hell is going on in there? <laughs> and uh, Charlotte's just, you know. Kind of, she's looking at the broom. Oh, that's yeah, a nice she's broom. The, the that's a really spot. nice broom, if you know Funny. what I'm saying. <laughs> um, Abigail. Uh, what, you mean, what you it's Fluffy. Okay, Fluffy is going to flop back around uh, in front of the shambling mound to motivate him. Okay. And it's going to get, like, close. Like, not close enough that it can hit it, but close enough to sense its presence and be very tasty. I don't know. It's going to be like... Oh my. Okay, why don't you uh, roll me a performance check as okay. you're familiar to With see advantage? how well you can <laughs> capture the the shambling mound's attention. God damn it! I believe in you. Please help me. God. Hey! Did you guys like, know <laughs> that owls are the quietest flyers <laughs> of the bird kingdom? <laughs> Why did I sit Squawk? I'm gonna ask you where's Squawk during all this. He's just hanging out in the darkness. Okay. <laughs> Alphonse. Keep the darkness out. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is like some passive aggressive shit right now. All right, do you, what, what do you do? I did drop the darkness. You drop the darkness. Okay. Oh yes, game on, baby. <laughs> Just here. I feel like when you've been like looking at darkness for a long time and the lights suddenly come on, I'm like, ah! Just tentacles whapping flat. And I kind of reposition these tokens slightly. Alphonse, what else are you doing on your turn? Was I able to discern like if it could hear us or? smell us to, def to find us? Hmm. Well, you didn't see what it did on its turn, and so I think True. unless you have some pre-existing familiarity with this type of creature, I don't think you were able to necessarily collect the data that you're looking for. Yeah. Hmm. You see that Vlad has this thing braced. It's kind of half out the window, but the sheer bulk of what remains inside the room is uh, considerable. And I don't see it's fighting him at every turn. Do I see Fluffy out there, like trying to get his attention? Or is it um, blocking it? I would say that the bulk of the Shambler at this point is kind of fully clogging the window frame. Okay. You might have a sense of what Abigail is doing, though, uh, instinctually. I just have no idea what to do to help her. 
push it. If we all yeah, push it together. The brute force it. <laughs> all right, what's it gonna be, Alphonse? Sorry. Um. Yeah, I guess I'll just shoulder ram it as well, as best as I hey. can. Do. Go ahead and roll me an athletics check. Be real I good. believe you. You got this. <laughs> oh God. I'm afraid that the bulk of this thing is just so wedged in the window that uh, you're not able to make any any meaningful impact. Right. Well, um, step back, or would that be opportunity that I can like flash out? Uh, it, if you ahead. step out of its range, it may attack you. You're unsure. I don't know if it can see me or not. So yeah, I'm gonna stay in range. Okay. Uh, Maze. There's an awful commotion going on from inside this room. He Never. is going to step Never. into the show and see the clown car that this <laughs> shambling mouth <laughs> being pushed through. And uh, he's going to just be like, so I might be able to get help, but it's going to hurt it. Don't kill it. Can you just don't kill it. Uh, I mean, technically. Don't attack it. You'll make it angry. And he's going to make a clawing motion with his hand. And he's going to cast Withering Bloom. Oh, oh my goodness. So, uh... Every creature within a 20 foot radius that of my, ch or sorry, 10 foot radius of my choice, which is just going to be the, sh the mound, okay. is needs to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, all non-magical vegetation in that area withers away. Okay. All right. And um, then it gives, I can choose one person who I'm going to pick, Vlad who can roll a hit dice and immediately regain health equal to what they roll plus my spell casting modifier. That's pretty crazy. It. All right, here's the, is he gonna constitution <laughs> saving throw? Yes, please, con save. Um, all right, that is a 13, which I believe fails. It does, so. Ah, he has a plus three too. Go ahead and give me your uh, damage roll. Damage is going to be nine. Nice. Um, I'll even say, although this is not necessarily exactly uh, rules as written, but because of the nature of this particular spell, I feel like this spell is particularly well suited for this adversary. I'm going to give invulnerability to this nine points of damage. Um, so that'll be 18 points of damage uh -oh. as oh, no. sort of certain leaves and tendrils of vines and like a tip of one of the like flowery sort of things, petals on his head kind of char and blacken and wither away um, as energy is transferred into Vlad. And Vlad, nice. you gain an extra five on top of the five you rolled from my modifier. I love you. He's probably capped out now, but uh, yeah. That brings us to Abigail, unless, Maze, there's anything else on your turn. Uh... Nope, yeah, no, that's... Okay. That is, he's gonna just take another step back. Abigail. Uh, I'm gonna take a peek around the corner, and I see this thing halfway through. Now... Yeah, it's, oh. it's half through the window. It's gonna need a, a really significant shove to make it all the way back out the other side. Will... And it's fighting at every turn. It's trying to claw its way back into the room. Will, uh, can I make some kind of history check? I know that, like, would I have read about Shambling Mouse before to understand its senses? I think given it's the heat of combat, I'm going to rely more on your passive score. Okay. My passive um, history is 17. Pretty good. So I would say um, you get the sense that they are able to perceive things around themselves through um, very 
sort of alien sensory organs that are, are able to perceive little changes in the air. They, they emit very microscopic motes of pollen that when someone moves through those motes, it's, it's almost like a, a, a sort of super sense of perception for things that are nearby to it. Things AKA. that are further away, it has no sense that they exist. So Scarlet knew it, but did not want to metagame, but mm -hmm. wanted to share information if I could successfully glean it. So yes, uh, it has blind sense. Um, yes. Perfect. Mechanically, it has blind, blind sight up to a certain radius, and then it can't perceive gotcha. anything past that. Okay. Um, well, shoot. We... We want to shove about. You know what? I am going to hustle over and try to open this window. Do you, I? Can I do that, or do I need to? You can. Have something help me. You can do that. However, as you walk over to the window, a limb whips out at you as you've left. Its I cast area. shield. Well, you you can you can wait to see what the attack. Oh will oh, I can. That, but okay okay. It lashes out at you. With oh, a hold on. Twenty-six. Oh, no, I'm getting eaten in the face. As this limb slams into Abigail, dealing fifteen points of bludgeoning damage. Oh my gosh! That's so much damage. Ow! I hurt. It, it it smashes you over towards the window. You've reached where you wanted to be. Uh, at, uh, at some cost. Yeah. Uh, ow! Um, I could get this window open. I'm gonna open the window. It's a large, triple paned window, but you can work shop on getting getting parts of it open, and and cooler air starts to. You know what? Fuck it. The Is there a brick anywhere around here? Huh. Ah. Uh... I take my spell book and I throw it as hard as I can yeah, at the class. Hey, it's a big me a, spell roll book. Me strength, roll me a strength, uh, a strength check. Damn it, strength. That old school leather binding with little bits of metal inclusion. It's like throwing your keys at a window. Yeah, athletics. Hefty, I'm sure it's a hefty tone. Yeah, it's a big um, one. Athletics or strength? Strength, strength, pure strength. Strength uh, ability check. Okay. 14. I'd say that's enough to crack the glass. Uh, Just crack it? I'm trying to shatter this bitch. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty significant glass. Oh. Okay, I'll give it to you. You shatter one of the three panes of glass as as your book soars through it and lands on top of the hedge just outside. Shit, I'm gonna need to get that back. Um, guys, bring the mount. If you can't get it out here, bring it out here. I am not. Working on dragging it halfway across the goddamn room just, to just another window. It. Just lead it. God, I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh. On the far side of the broken window, uh, you you hear the flap 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 of Fluffy just kind of like. Okay, Fluffy. I need uh, just uh, fuck. Fluffy probably can't carry my tome. Maybe. Um. <laughs> uh. Can I use my action to carefully? climb out the window without cutting myself, or not my action, my movement. You can use remaining movement to climb out the window. You, yes. Your action was the- Yeah, yeah, the I meant to say movement. That was, I apologize. But yeah, you have, you've used, uh, well, let's see, you used five to get here and then another 10, 15 to get back. So you've used 15 feet of movement so far. Climbing out the window would be difficult terrain, but with your remaining movement, you can certainly manage it. Okay, I will. Okay. Hop out, because yeah. I need to get my tone back. I can't cast spells without it. You get outside the window as you tumble off of the hedge into the pathway outside. Uh, you grasp your tome along the way. Uh, you are outside. Okay. Um, I guess that's all I could I do. I think that's probably your turn. Yeah. Uh, old Shambly is going to try and force its way back into, um, into the room. It will, let's see, it needs to, mm, okay, it's going to um, try and shake off Vlad and instead it will send its attacks at Alphonse. 
um, who's on the other side of the window. Uh, first attack um, is a 12. Nope. With its other tendril, it will kind of try and slam Vlad away from it to make some space. Uh, Vlad, that is a 24 to hit. All right, now's the time for Silvery Bards. Let's try that one more time. Okay, you can see it. You can use your reaction. It attacks you again uh, as you spend your spell slot on Silvery Bards, and that is a nine. I want to just take a moment and make a comment to the audience that Strixhaven was not play tested, and Silvery Bards is not a balanced spell. Anyways, <laughs> <moving on. laughs> um, no, it's not. You uh, force it to miss, and that is, in fact, it's tur actually, you know what? It's gonna. Well, no, you still have it grappled because it hasn't tried to escape your grasp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got you've got me at your mercy on this one. Well played, sir. What are you doing? All right. Uh... Athletics checks for the push to get it out of here. All right, um, let's, it. let's do it, and I get to make this one at advantage. Oh, you I, why does God hate me? It's because we use silvery barbs. This is this is like karmic <laughs> justice for. Okay, and I'm gonna use my second attack to do the same. All right. Will you now? Oh, what is the Come on. Resist. Right, oh, 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 oh. Uh, but here's something I forgot last time, and thank oh, you, no. God, for this. Oh, no. Fortune of the Mini. Fortune of the Mini. Uh, <laughs> this Hobgoblin has so many tricks up his sleeve. Fortune of the Mini. So uh, that my 11 now becomes a 14. Oh, my. All right, with a fateful shove, putting all of your might into it, ah! you heave Shambly through the window, and you hear a sickening, like, squeeze and tearing of vines and, like, plant matter kind of ripping as it pops through, like air escaping a tube, uh, shards of glass breaking and creaking as it goes and it flops into the pathway on the far side right next to fluffy who's like ooh, 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 oh, uh, no. getting its attention oh no didn't floppy hold his action to dash though that was in a different turn that was oh. a different turn it is Yikes. fluffy's turn however fluffy. um, and as an owl you always can uh I fly by. Fly away, so. Yes. I do have flying away. Um, Where is Fluffy going? Straight up. Straight up? Uh, interesting, okay. Yeah, just straight up. Okay. Fluffy ascends to plus 70 feet. Yeah. Well out of reach. Alphon. The Shambler is now outside. That's the good news. I'm sort of at a loss about the ridiculousness of the scenario. <laughs> I'll just sort of wave my staff in the general direction of where Fluffy was. Okay. I'm gonna make an oh. illusion of Fluffy still flapping. Hopefully nice. distract it. I like it. There's an illusory Fluffy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll make it a sort of a blue so that we know the difference. Um, and it's it's flapping. Your illusion is, is flapping around in a, in a most distracting way. Yeah, sort of what Fluffy was doing before. Okay. It was looking very cute. That's what it was doing. <laughs> Maze. Uh, I'm the task is potentially accomplished as long as Fluffy, as long as Shambly takes the bait, and as long as Abigail can escape, escape. her current predicament. Uh, I, I guess I see the Shambler come flying through the window, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, there's my book. <laughs> it's sort of a yes, it's outside. <laughs> I'm outside kind of moment. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, guys. Maze is gonna, since he can see it, uh, just wanna make sure I have the range. Oh yeah, 60 feet. Uh, I'm gonna just like chuckle and build a little cloud in my hand and blow it towards the mound and cast levitate on it. Oh, oh my. Oh my. So it needs to make a con saving throw against my DC. And if it oh fails, it is a Macy's Day balloon at my whim. <laughs> uh, it fails. That's so a, I, I was just, thinking of a way to describe it. That's a good way to describe yeah. it. Yeah. It's a blimp. I lift it up 20 it? feet into the air and I just casually kind of direct it. I have it for 10 minutes, so. You see it kind of um, amorphously like, like clawing at the illusion of the bird, trying to get the bird. It, it's very focused on Fluffy, almost like it doesn't really realize it's being levitated. It's so fixated on this bird that it wants to get, get at. You have full control over it at this point. Um, when funny if it... you levitated it to the real Fluffy. <laughs> um, oh, well, Fluffy is I think at this point there. you have it at your yeah. mercy, and I, I'd like to know if anyone intends to do anything other than allow Maze to guide the, this mound to its eventual resting point. You laugh at it. Anyone have anything they would like to do other than that or to intervene? No, that sounds like an amazing plan. Okay. In that case, I think you can wrap the combat months. encounter. You successfully <laughs> managed to get Shambly out of the bath, which is, uh, you know, not a small, not a small thing because it is a large creature. Maze, what are you doing with uh, this Shambler that you have floating around at, at your mercy? I I'm gonna. So I just kind of walk after it, step through the window, and give a good look around. Once I've, I've, I'm going to push it another 20 feet up, so it's just 40 in the air, so it doesn't have a chance of like hopefully throwing vines at me. Yeah, but yeah. I'm sure. going to look around the garden to see where the best place to put it, or if there's an obvious place of like, hey, that looks like it's had a shambling mound taking over for like 20 years. Yeah, there's a number of places in the hedge. I mean, honestly, you could almost just drop it in the hedges and it would probably just slink into the underbrush and do its own thing. But uh, if you want it to be a little bit more strategic, there is an outlying building. You see the roof of it uh, further to the north. That's a building, though, maybe not what you want. Um, there is also some little alcoves in the hedge rows uh, deeper in, like over this way and back here. You could, it's kind of, You can't kind of see where they lead, but... You could kind of guide the shambler there and just sort of set it down somewhere in the maze. Uh, or if you have maze. something else in mind. I'm not going to put it directly in the maze just in case we have to run that later and okay. forget that there's a shambling mound somewhere sure. in the maze. Uh, Maybe over to the, to the west then, there's just kind of a, a rolling expanse of overgrown hedges and underbrush. I like that. Yeah, I'm just okay. gonna float it over there and just keep pushing it at like 20 feet around for yeah. the rest of the 10 minutes and it's set like it turning down. around in a slow circle, <laughs> uh, just floating in the air. But each time it it's its orbit circles around towards the bird, it kind of reaches out until it gets 60 feet away. At which point, it sort of seems to give up. Fluffy is gonna come back into my hat, looking very upset that it was forced to do this shit. <laughs> Vlad is immediately headed straight back to Muscle Bobby to report a job well done. All <laughs> right. Well, a job well done indeed. And we will see what rewards Muscle Mommy has for you come next <laughs> session. But for this time, we need to wrap up with this episode. So I think this is a great conclusion point for this evening. You've dealt with old Shambly in the baths, and one of the modest household tasks is done. It's another milestone for y'all. Uh, on your way to the next level. Not quite there yet, but getting close. Um, all right, y'all. We are going to wrap up here for today. I want to thank uh, these wonderful players for coming along on this journey. I want to thank you all in chat for following along, whether you're watching it live on Twitch or catching the replays on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching uh, and for showing interest in our content. 
Um, this has been Foundry Virtual Tabletop Presents A House Divided. It's an original adventure that we've made and we're very proud of it. I hope everyone's having a great time. Um, let me just check and see. I, I don't think we need, need to do like a full introduction, but does anyone have anything that's going on that you want to support or shout out or um, send people's attention to? I... Uh, Sorry, you go first. Oh no, no, go ahead. I am open for emote and overlay and Twitch asset commissions. Hit me up on Twitter. Awesome. Really uh, good. Check them out. They are really good. Yeah. Definitely oh. check it out if you're in need of some assets for your stream or for Twitch emotes or anything like that. Or I don't know, are you still doing portrait commissions too? Or are Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. Awesome. Anyone else got uh, anything they want to spotlight? Yeah, um, this this weekend we're recording the next episode of Dungeons and Dragons. So if you like your nerdy news with a healthy dose of accountability, uh, please be sure to check that out. We're going to be talking about the the same thing everybody else is talking yep. about. I'll just yep, the topic. <laughs> the topic. <laughs> I'll be listening in. When is that? Uh, the new episode is going to come out on Monday. Monday. All right. I will stay tuned for it for sure. I want to hear what, well, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I think I know what your thoughts are, but I'm going to, I'm going to listen anyway. I should mention it's a rated, it's a rated 18 podcast. Okay. All podcast. right. I, yeah. I'm definitely going to listen. Um, <laughs> anyone else have anything they want to, they want to highlight? Okay. All good. Yeah. I Thank you all so much. It's been really wonderful. Um, Matt can play our, our video as an outro and then we'll we'll be out for this time. But please join us again for the next episode of House Divided. Thank you so much. Have a lovely time and good night. Bye. Bye.